Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the regular meeting of Council for Monday, June 25th in City Hall Council Chambers. I'd like to uh, call the meeting to order and have the agenda approved, uh, including uh, any late items. Uh, first, I'd like to recognize that we are doing our business this evening on the traditional unceded territory of the Hupetchesit and Sashot First Nations. Uh, councilors, any late items? City Clerk, any late items? Then I uh, need a motion uh, that the agenda be approved, please. I'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. Uh, council as well, I'd like to ad adopt the minutes of the regular council meeting held at 7 p.m. on June the 11th. Uh, motion to adopt those minutes, please. I'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, Brings us to the public input period. It's an opportunity for the public to address council on topics of relevance to city council. A maximum of four speakers for no more than three minutes each can be accommodated. Anybody wish to address council? Okay, I saw Ellen's hand go up first, so. There are three, okay. Am I, am I on? Yes. Good evening, <clears throat> uh, your worship, members of council, city staff, members of the public. Thanks for this brief opportunity, and I promise I won't take three minutes. I'm um, speaking to, uh, in fact, um, as, as an individual who works on um, Third Avenue and as somebody who is involved with the Uptown Merchants Association, um, about uh, the letter uh, to council um, asking for some direction as relates to a uh, circle, uh, traffic circle or roundabout, as I call it, on Third Avenue. And um, I'm very supportive of it, and I would really urge Council to strongly consider um, making plans to have this included in a budget in 2019. Um, I personally cross the street on a pretty regular basis. Uh, the big trucks going up and down the street are dangerous to me. Uh, I have uh, almost been hit twice on the street because of cars that don't see around the side of a truck and have come racing up the hill. Um, uh, I think uh, uh, the circle will not only improve the look of the street, and the ability for people to be there, but also uh, is a great safety enhancement. So thanks for your, your consideration of that. Okay, thank you. And Chris Washington, I saw your hand go up second. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. Thank you for allowing me three minutes of your time this evening. I also would like to speak on behalf of the agenda item concerning the traffic circle at the intersection of Third Avenue and Angus. Quality of life and livability in our community is dependent upon initiatives such as this. Apparently, the Uptown Merchants did a study back in the 80s that suggested we do exactly what we we're proposing today, 30 years ago. This is not a new idea, and perhaps if the city had moved forward on it then, Third Avenue would look completely different than it does today. You may say that we need four lanes of traffic in a shopping area. However, I'd like to point out that 10th Avenue only has two lanes. You may say that we have had logging trucks up and down 3rd Avenue for 40 years and why change it? To that I would say, if you continue to do what you'll all, you've always done, then you'll get what you've always got. A community that continues to fall behind in residential and commercial growth. I have heard countless stories of individuals and families who have moved to Port Alberni because of the beauty of our surroundings and with an expectation that things are going to change. And a year, two years later, they're leaving because they see no positive things happening with respect to the quality of life in our community. I understand that for many in our community, change is difficult. And change for the sake of change is never wise. However, change in order to move forward with a vision for the future is imperative. And small steps such as this can start that process. A traffic circle may be new to our community, but they have been used around the world with great success for many, many years. They have a track record of improving safety and traffic flow. Many other cities on Vancouver Island have traffic circles. We put forward this request in consultation with individuals who live in this area. They want to see the area as safe, well lit, and for it to become a thriving hub of boutique style stores, markets, and restaurants. We will never have that the way Third Avenue sits today. Also, the Uptown merchants have already declared that they want to fundraise 
for some of their proposed changes. How can we do so when we have no idea what the potential cost is? As well, we all know that putting something in a budget does not mean it will happen, but it will keep the traffic circle top of mind when the budget is next visited. And in the meantime, the Uptown Merchants Association can continue to fundraise for it. So please, vote in favour of our request. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And Keith. Thank you very much, Council. Um, I have to apologize. I want to speak to the city of Port Alberni, I'm not so much. Sorry, Council. just uh, introduce yourself. Even though I, my name know. is Keith Ambrose. I live at thirty one forty seven on Second Avenue. I run the Uptown Urban Market. Thank you. Very successful little operation. Yeah. Um, I'm a little concerned though, and this is why I came. I, I, I didn't come to stand before council. I came to stand before the city of Port Alberni, and explain to you that we uh, we've developed a new problem. It's not traffic circles, and uh, I am one of the residents of the uh, Uptown area. Um, I'm also part of the Uptown Merchants Association. Haven't been to any meetings lately, but, um, and I wasn't consulted on this, and I'm not interested in a traffic circle. I'm interested in our real problems. We have real problems. We, have a, we took a delivery, folks, of some unsavory folks. A couple weeks ago, I woke up in the morning, and I, I'm not special. I don't have special powers. I can read auras, though. I, everybody can, I think. I believe everybody can. And, but I, I walked out in the neighborhood, and the first guy I seen was Bow and Arrow Man. And he was in his 50s, silver hair to his shoulders, ex-hippie, packing a bow and arrow like a five-year-old boy. And uh, I wasn't concerned, because I've seen plenty of crap uptown. And then the next person was worse, and the next person was worse. They were all new, they're all new. We took a bus load, we've taken a second bus load, we've taken a hit. We've taken a bad hit, Port Alberni. Now, here's what I say. I'm a glass half full kind of guy. I run a market in an unsavory neighborhood. I exist in an unsavory neighborhood. It is disgusting. Somehow, some way they give me a wide berth. But we've taken a hit. Somebody's delivering people to us. And I'm going to go glass half full on this one and just try to show you the other side. I'm, I, I don't want to be negative. I don't want to be, I don't want to drive something down. I want to drive a message forward. So glass half full. Let's, let's accept them. Let's say these homeless, if you call them homeless, and I don't call them homeless, I know better. There was no homeless people on the streets of Port Alberni at Christmas time. I was on the streets of Port Alberni at Christmas time. There were no homeless people. I haven't worked in, in, in a couple of years and I haven't seen a paycheck in that much time either, but I'm not homeless and destitute or nothing. And I can make a bowl of soup like you I don't know. Don't tell my girlfriend. Um, however, we've taken a hit. So I say we choose homeless. I say if we're gonna go this way, if people are inviting them or if people are sending them, it's pretty obvious to me and it'll be pretty obvious to any of you. You go out and look, the streets are absolutely full of brand new people. And these people come with shopping, they're, they're, they're shopping cart ready. They're not Port Alberni people. They're not from Eucula, Tofino, a house at Bamfield. They're shopping cart. They're Sorry, Keith, city. we're just running out of your yeah. time here. Okay, well, I'm just telling you, take a real good look, Port Alberni. If we're going to invite them, let's go real. Let's, let's invite them. Let's choose better ones. Let's like, we choose our hockey team. We choose a hockey team in a certain way. We choose our political representatives in the same way. Let's choose better homeless. We got a bad batch, folks. And that's all I got to say. I'm going to have to leave because I'm, I'm angry for a lot of different reasons. Not at you, not at any of you. I'm not angry at any of you, trust me. I'm angry. I'm angry for a bunch of different reasons. But this is what I see, and I see this every day. I live in it. I try. It's terrible. The batch we just took, we could do better. If we're going to invite homeless, please let's send that hockey bus down and let me pick them. Just one last, one last question. Are these people that you're seeing, are they taking up residence in the community? Oh my or God, they... I, I couldn't possibly answer a question. What they're taking up is your property. What they're taking up is your freedom. What they're taking up is your peace and quiet and your ability to own private property and your tax money. They're gonna eat that alive. You okay. guys are finished. If you don't look at this problem as real, 
And I don't mean to adopt homeless people. I'm just being devil's advocate dickhead, I guess. I think we got a problem. If they're shipping them to us, let's pick them. Like we pick our hockey team. And I'm dead serious about that. And I'm really sorry for my anger. Okay, thanks, Keith. Um, if you'd like to come up, please come ahead. You're the, just, you're the fourth, fourth person. Just, uh, and again, oh, just... Bob Fanage Schmidt. Thank uh, you. I live on Anderson, 2110. Um, last Friday, we attended the Upper Third Community event, which we thought would be a great deal to, as a local to go up there and see what's happening, because other than doing a little bit of shopping there, we don't normally go there anymore once sellers left. However, we thought with the live music, hamburgers, $5 donated to the Bread of Life, which is a good cause, uh, we drove by there and looking for parking. As we drive by, we notice people using hard drugs right there, right in the open. So uh, the wife and I decided that maybe that's not where we want to go. What you have as a city is a major problem with drug use in that area. So I don't want to see the city spend any money on improvements in the uptown. I'm not in favor of roundabouts. It's a four-way stop. Everybody has to stop there anyway. But before we deal with spending any kind of money up there, we have to deal with that problem. Um, no tourists, no locals are going to go there. I mean, we decided to go down to Lower Argyle and Harbor Key, where we felt it was safer. I mean, it's a great place to go. Upper Third, sorry, it's not safe. It's not worth the hassle. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Bob. Okay, Council, that then brings us to the end of the public input period and it brings us to our delegations. And the first delegation uh, is introduction of our new manager of bylaw services. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. I'm, I am very pleased to introduce uh, Flynn Scott, our new manager of bylaw services. He's been with us for about uh, two weeks now and most recently comes from the district of Tofino. Well, Flynn, welcome. Good it's evening, nice to worship. meet you. It's nice to meet you, Your Worship, councillors and members of the public. Like Scott said, my name is Flynn. Um, I come from Tofino. Um, I'm very eager to join your community and to listen and, and hear the concerns uh, that are pressing to your community and be able to help resolve uh, any issues we may face. Well, it's good to hear that because, and I hope you get lots of, uh, lots of sleep, Flynn, because I think you're going to need lots of energy for your new job. So welcome to Port Alberni. Thank you very much. Council, anything uh, any councillors wish to say? Uh, Councillor McClellan? Yeah, just welcome and just curious, what, what did you do in Tofino? I was the supervisor for bylaw services uh, for three and a half years. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank Welcome, you. and uh, I'm glad you're on board. Thank you. Uh, Council, our first uh, official delegation is from the Uptown <coughs> Merchants, and I bet uh, Mr. Kevin Wright is going to be Mr. presenting. Kevin Wright's the one doing them, yeah. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Tonight we're talking about one of the projects I've actually had on the uh, on the books for about six years now. I made this presentation to the previous council. Um, just at the start of uh, John Douglas's uh, tour. And the idea, of course, was to actually try to bring some culture and community up to the uptown area. At the in, at the outset, I actually had about 18 artists uh, the last uh, tour uh, to see if I could get 18 artists to actually put art out on the streets. And I made a request to the city to actually build cement pillars going down Argyle to actually showcase the art. The artists were very excited and keen about it. And unfortunately, there was a financial tie to the whole thing, which made it difficult to actually pursue. Um, so I've gone around that. I've tried a new, new model this time. So one of the things we're actually going to be attempting to do now is I'm looking at actually installing steel pillars. These ones are actually made of uh, 516 steel. They will carry at least a car's weight, and they weigh about 400 pounds. Um, the total uh, cost for the pillars themselves is about $2,000 plus GST, and will completely, come completely decked out. They're also lit up, so at night they are lit up by lights. So it'll actually present a nice uh, element as you're going down uh, Argyle. So the intent is actually to start creating a cultural element in the uptown area, especially on the, the arts district. Um, we have, again, uh, quite a few artists in the community, about uh, three dozen that actually reside in the community. Connie Watts, Gordon Dick, um, uh, the Atlio 
families. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of talent in the community, and many, most people actually don't know they exist. So this was something that I found uh, frustrating and astounding, that our own community did not know that we had these amazing people living in our community, and that they were very keen and adamant to being involved. Um, the city hasn't in the past invested very much in the way of art. Uh, we have a few uh, features, but most of them are paid for through um, uh, groups buying them. Um, so I was trying to encourage that to happen with the city, but last time, of course, it was a financial issue. So this time we've found a way around the financial issue. We've actually set these pillars up so they can actually be purchased by sponsorship, and we have uh, quite a few already uh, spoken for. Uh, we have around 10 already paid for. So uh, we have uh, Sutton Realty. Sonny Sutton Realty is interested in buying one. Uh, the Florin Depot's purchased a few. We also have a new, memorial, a new idea, which is actually a memorial program. Much like you have memorial benches on the waterfront, you can actually memorialize this pillar as well. The pillar is around $2,000, and my understanding is that the benches are in approximately around $3,000, so it's actually a savings. So the concept is that I want to start at the uh, Roland Art Center, put two of them there, and have, in the long run, have 10 per block down the hill all the way down to the waterfront, out into the quay and out onto the jetty, right out onto the waterfront. Uh, which will effectively give us 60 or 70s in the long run. But we have a tremendous amount of art uh, uh, available to us from the community who will be able to be involved in it. Um, so the concept is that we would have these pillars, I'll hand this around, and the, um, the idea is that the base actually comes out of the pillar, and we'll show you. Right now we have these two pieces. This is basically, I've shrunk it down so people can get a look at this. The idea is that we'd actually have a steel plate, and this is the only expense for the city, is that the city would actually bolt this down to the street. I can get a contractor, but I'm not allowed to drill holes in your city, so I have to get you guys to do that. The rest of the fee is free. There is no tax dollars whatsoever, not a single penny going to this project. Um, so I'll just hand this around. You guys can look at this a little bit. That's the concept. I'll also hand you some mock-ups of streetscapes with sculptures. So the one that's coming around first, that's actually this scale here. This is the smaller scale. And this one's designed for pieces 16 inches to 3 feet. And then the next scale down is actually a wider, lower one. And that's designed for 3 feet and up. And then along the waterfront, I'd like to see ones that are actually longer to allow us to do horizontal work. The nice thing about the piece is the, the piece, if we keep them uniform and standardized, what we do is we actually supply the uh, artist with a steel plate. They mount their art on the steel plate. And then the art is installed by the sea. There are special security features involved in the, in the pillar making it very almost d impossible to actually remove the art from the piece once it's installed. Um, the, the concept, of course, will allow us to have up to 60 or 70 art pillars down the hill. And as much as this may come across as a Shemanus model, where we're trying to actually do this kind of art program to encourage as many tourists to come, my focus is really on the cultural impact of this to the community. We have so many people with so much talent and so much character in their, in their culture that we have little access to them. Um, so this is a way to actually, for the artists to actually showcase and show their art to the community and their culture to the community on the street, making it a way to lift the community by, by virtue of understanding who and what this community is about through art. The uh, nice thing about it is that it is uh, free and also the pieces will actually be for sale. Each artist will retain ownership of the piece and the piece will actually be for sale, effectively making a 2,000 foot long art gallery. Um, it also allows for people to purchase the art and then change out the art as so it will always remain fresh. Um, and I'm also going to be encouraging uh, Rotary, Kinsmen, and other groups to actually consider buying the piece, in, uh, giving money to the artist, and then taking the piece off of Argyle and then moving it on to the lower, like Victoria Key. They can move them in front of the school. They can go in front of Echo Center, more in front of the city. Um, and it allows art to start to filter out into the community and then refreshing our arts district area. Um, Another effect that it would most likely have is anybody who visits the Harbor Key will see the art spread around the Harbor Key and then can follow it, Hansel Gretel effect, following the crumbs up the hill all the way up to the arts gallery and, and then, of course, right back down. Uh, now, in order to affect the, the sale of the, of the pieces, the arts gallery, uh, the, the Roland Arts Center, was, is willing to uh, be the conduit for purchase. So on here, you'll have the name of the artist, the name of the piece, and then the contact information for this particular artist. But as well, there'll be information on the plaque to give you. So if you're interested in purchasing the piece, you can go to the Roland Arts Center and actually make a purchase. Then the artist will be contacted on the shipping angle of it. Uh, that's very important to make sure that the, the, the people actually have instant access to purchase other than trying to do some sort of trying to find an artist, depending on whether or not he's in the community. Connie Watts is a good example. She would love to be part of this but she quite often travels, so getting a hold of her and running a Visa or MasterCard might be difficult. The Arts Council has agreed to do a 1% commission 
Uh, we will have a 5% commission in total on the art. The reason for that is to care for the pillars themselves. So any sale will actually go into a crude fund that the Arts Council will then take care of. Any extra fees, say that the lights burn out or there's damage, they will be repaired through that fund. And as well, as if any uh, pieces are damaged or stolen, we're likely to have an extra bit of fund to actually compensate the artist. Now we've gone into this, a lot of people have been coming after the idea that it could be vandalized, and it could be vandalized. But we've also got evidence that the art that's currently in the community, the murals have not been spray painted, and almost every single sculpture, especially along Argyle, down onto the waterfront, and Gordon Dick's sculpture on the corner of Angus and Third, has not been touched has never been touched and it's unlikely to be touched. So most of the artists have a great amount of confidence that they won't be a attacked or maligned. And even if it did, they all said, we didn't care. They, when, you're, when you're making art, and I'm an artist myself, when you're making art, art has a value only when it's purchased. Up until that point, it's just labor. So if you've ever gone and painted a building, a gorilla painting, and you've, you've given 10 hours of your time to, to help a community painting a wall or trimming some trees or broom busting, you're spending your time. And the artist thinks of it as the same way. They see the art as time. So they're willing to put the time out there and they are not concerned about the actual damage. They believe in their community that much and, the, and I'm hoping the rest of the community can see the same thing. Um, the, uh, we have a list of people who already want to get involved and we actually have a, a, a special process in order for them to be selected and that's one of the concerns many people had. How do we know that the art is going to be of quality and what it's going to be like? We're going to be convening a board of five. One's going to be, um, the, we've got uh, different artists in the community, especially one from the Rotary Arts Council is going to be involved in a person from the city to make sure the city's interests are taken into account. The concept is that we're going to have f uh, basically four rules. The first rule is that the, a piece cannot be offensive or prejudiced to any race, creed, color, sexual orientation, or um, gender. Uh, so that means the piece cannot overtly go after anybody in that res respect. The next one is it has to be of good fit and finish and well made, so that'll be determined by the group. That is just not a piece of junk just thrown under the pillar, so we're not going to have ugly sculptures in that effect. Thirdly, that it is safe to interact with, meaning that it is not rusty, has sharp edges, things that point out, or have scissor points that where it can pinch or hurt anybody. That'll be determined by the group. And then the fourth one is that it isn't overtly sexual to cause consternation and uncomfortable uh, viewing by the, by the public. Um, after those four points, the reason why I've set that up is to make sure that it doesn't become committeeized, that the committee doesn't choose what the art is, that the artist gets to choose what the art is, and then the rules, those four rules, as long as they don't break them, they're okay. So it means that it's not going to become just salmon or just orcas or just whales because the committee would tend to want to think that that's how we market things. In reality, the artist should be the one who's in charge of the art and how it speaks to the community. And that's basically the fact of that. So what I'm asking for is permission to actually install the pieces. We can have uh, four by the middle of July installed on Argyle and Third. And if you want to cycle through, Divina, if you can just, Divina, is there a possibility you can just cycle a couple of those pictures through for me? So I've got, I uh, apologize about the way I did it, but I actually took this pillar out and I took it around and I, I showcased where I would like to actually have the pillars installed in the initial one, which is on the corner of Third and Argyle. As well as, you can see how it references with the buildings. It doesn't stick out too much and it helps that. It will have above lighting and below lighting, so it'll look really quite good, I think. And then they will also would want to put them uh, in front of the city hall. There's a couple spots right in front of the foyer here, just as you're going out, that I'd like to see them placed. And I think it uh, would look exceptionally good there. So, of course, we just had the one sculpture. We're going to have a myriad of sculptures from a myriad of different people. Um, so that's what I'm asking for tonight is permission to consider doing it. Like I said, there is zero costs. Um, to the taxpayer except for the installation and I can't get around that insurance. and insurance there is no insurance the insurance Sorry, you need to tell them oh the insurance problem okay uh, so I went and talked because I may bring up the insurance angle uh, so I did talk to the insurance about this the uh, the liability for the city this is considered basically an installation like you would a bird bath or a, uh, a planter uh, as long as there's no physical chance of danger that which will be determined by the group. There is no liability on the city. The insurance itself cannot be carried on to the piece itself because the, uh, a group of, say, 30 or 40 artists can't carry a group insurance because each artist would have to have each and every piece evaluated, which would likely be more than the piece is worth in the long term. So each artist can then go get their own insurance, and they're perfectly welcome to do that. And if a car runs into it, the ICBC takes care of it. But as far as the valuation, it gets too complicated to have 30, 40, 50, 60 pieces because someone can say their piece is worth a million dollars and they have to prove it. As I said, art isn't worth anything until someone pays for it. And then finally, um, I wanted to send this around. This is a uh, sign I talked about last time. I'm going to be building this sign. I need to get permission again to build this sign. 
Uh, this is going to be made out of the, be the beams from the SOMAS sort shed, and it's going to be exactly to scale except for really big. Uh, well, it'll be nine feet long and three feet high, and I went out with Wilf uh, to uh, check out the sight lines and the size, and he is very keen on it. I also took Wilf out for the art project as well, and he is very keen on it. And um, one other thing just to mention, Pat Deacon has been investigating art and its impacts on the community and how revitalization is inherently tied to art and culture through that uh, angle. And he'd be willing, certainly happy to come forward and speak to you on that if you're interested in asking him questions about that because he's actually been investigating how impactful art is. And so the sign I'd like to get done shortly, sometime in the next few months, um, but I, I'm not going to start it unless the city gives permission to actually build it. And that again will be at no cost except for the installation of the piece. It has to be bolted to the ground. Okay, Kevin, yes. uh, just a couple questions. Sure. Um, first off, uh, who is this convening board of five and how are those people? Selected? The convening board of five will be determined shortly. Um, we've had a few keynote people that have actually requested to, to join. Uh, Connie Watts has requested to be part of it. I think she'd be invaluable, especially at the start, since she's world renowned for her art, public art sculptures, and she'd be a great voice to, to speak for the community as well as First Nations community. Uh, I would like to have a member of the Arts Council, um, so we have an art critic, basically, uh, one from the Rotary Arts Center, or sorry, one from the Rotary Arts District, the actual Rotary, because it's their Rotary Street, so I'd like to have someone involved with that. And then the fourth one would be a city uh, representative. Uh, Wilf could be, if, or whoever would like to be on the board, because their job is to actually look at the piece as to how it impacts the city and its function and interaction. And then the fifth would be determined by, it could be a, a citizen, uh, as long as there's five, it's really the effect. Okay, and then the, the uh, second question that I had was pertaining to that big sign, mm -hmm. uh, where are you proposing to put that one? Uh, actually, at the picture you see right there, there's a, that's on the corner of 3rd and Angus, right in front of the new renovated uh, uh, spa. There's a larger garden area there, and there's really ugly, I consider really ugly, uh, power box there. You mean 3rd and Argyle? Sorry, 3rd and Argyle, my bad. Okay. Sorry, 3rd and Argyle. And so there's a really un, you know, unfortunate placement of a, a power box there. And the, 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 the sign would be placed at a slight angle facing towards the other corner, basically. Okay, so then do you think that there's power to each one of these places where you're, wanting, where you're proposing to put The power on the in? corners isn't, isn't accessible, but the powers along the streets are, where we're going to be putting the midriff in the building. So the idea is that we'll have the two larger pillars will go on either corner, yeah. and then three down the midriff in the middle of the buildings, and the building owners have already agreed to allow us to plug in there. Okay. So that's where power will come from there. The hope is that that vision will kind of incite the city to help get power to the other ones in the long run. I did entertain the idea of solar panels trying to be totally green. However, a solar panel is about as big as this to run a, a motorcycle battery, enough power to run it for about eight hours before, with this much wattage, it would drain the battery quite quickly before yeah. the, and the cycles would not keep up. Eventually there would be, some would be lit and some wouldn't be lit. So right. technology is not quite there for a bit, it'll come. <laughs> we could have a treadmill at each one. Yes, we know. could <laughs> actually see how it's at night though, you know, so it's gonna be. <laughs> Goes but into the, a battery. Yes, but the hope is that we would have 40 or 50 sculptures lit up, different styles, different colors, different techniques, all the way down Argyle, right down to the water at night, which, of course, will increase light, which we're talking about doing, and increase the reason for people to be up there looking at them at night, which will increase, you know, traffic pattern. I'm also trying to increase the amount of walking pattern on Argyle, so those new buildings that are being renovated right now will see a purpose in trying to divine businesses that would be helpful to that. Yeah, okay. Any other any, questions? Any other questions, Council? Uh, Councillor Minions and then Councillor McClellan. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to speak to the, um, the vandalization because um, I've heard that as a concern in the public as well. Um, it just kind of stuck out to me because when we had a branding committee a few years ago at the city, um, one thing that we spent a lot of time researching is um, community hubs and different areas in communities um, that had put in things like just you know tables and chairs that anyone could walk away with, um, sculptures, and they were always afraid that they would get vandalized or someone would come and take all the chairs or you know, um, and they found overwhelmingly that they did not because when they put positive things into a community people appreciated it mm -hmm. um, so I think you know that's certainly not going to always be the case um, they could get vandalized but I think overwhelmingly people will be happy we're putting something positive into the area um, I think there's a lot of value in investing in beautification and streetscapes and artwork um, in the community and while I definitely recognize the concern about um, you know what's happening uptown and the safety um, I think that this is sort of a way that we might overlook um, to improve safety um, mm. because I, I've told the story before but when I was the chair of ACOS and we would have meetings in the evening in the winter um, Ellen and I would you know walk out um, 
making sure we both got into our vehicles first before anyone left. I think we both felt generally very unsafe. Um, and then Power of Three opened up and we went outside on a dark you know, Tuesday evening um, and there were people with yoga mats walking by and the streets were populated and it was seven o'clock um, and I didn't feel in any kind of danger you know, in the winter in Port Alberni on Third Avenue where I think most people would um, in their minds picture it as a dangerous um, time. So it's populating the streets and making a place that people want to you know, run businesses and live that makes a huge difference. So it's not the whole piece of the puzzle, but it's definitely a part of it. So I definitely support what you're doing. Okay, and Councilor McClellan? Yeah, <clears throat> kind of glad you're, you're not trying the solar. It would be okay in the summertime and not so good in the wintertime. We don't yeah. have quite enough sun around here. Um, the other thing, I guess, a question I still got is that sign. Yes. You say you're going to put it here. Is it up on a building? Is it down on no, the ground? No, it's actually going to be on steel. It's exactly as you see it. It's got steel stanchions on the back to hold the sign up. And the, the, all the wood is actually made out of the old SOMAS sort shed decking that I, I took. I went down and actually sourced it to build that sign. That's the exact sign I showed to you six years ago. Mm hmm yeah, I, I got no problem with the sign. I'm just, yeah. I can't picture where it would go or what it well, would it's look gonna, like. Well, if you see that area right there, is that, there's that tree you're seeing in the middle of the, mm -hmm. the if it'll go on the other side of the, of the tree, and it'll actually cover up that electrical box. So it'll sit on a slight angle. It'll basically kind of shoot across, diagonally across 3rd Avenue towards. As long as it doesn't stop a line of sight for nope. traffic. Uh, we'll f very carefully, we, we stood there, we took out measuring tapes, and we put blocks of wood, or like we just basically figured out exactly how big it would, and it actually doesn't cross over that tree. So that sight line for the tree is actually the edge we're not gonna cross. So there's already an existing tree, so the sign will stay to the left of the tree, and that big gray box is already there, so there's only a little kind of a small window between it anyway. So we're effectively just covering that little window, and then across the, uh, the covering the electrical box. Okay. Uh, Councillor Alleman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so it's fantastic. Um, concept I think it's great um, I think one thing that that maybe you, you kind of glossed over but I think it's really important is the the whole notion of them being able to um, people in general being able to buy the artwork mm -hmm. um, uh, it, how is that going to be available is it will it be online or will it be marketed it'll or? be online but it, it'll most likely be in interaction just you know, through interaction where yeah. the reason I got this started is I think I uh, talked about last time is this was brought up because of the last time we had a cruise ship here um, a lot of the city was not open for them, which is kind of embarrassing at the same time. Um, we had about 600 people milling around uptown because they're going to get out and they're going to walk up the street. And I was hoping that, you know, having 80 art pillars of different denominations in different communities and maybe if we can get all 14 community nations to actually also put their art up there, we can actually put information placards on each uh, individual First Nations to go on the side so they can talk about the First Nations. If, uh, for instance, one other thing to also comment on, if the pillars are purchased by an individual, just like a bench, they don't dictate what goes on the pillar. So the idea is that uh, uh, Chuckle said could have a pillar, they could buy one as a, as a sponsorship, but um, an, you know, another Native member or a non-Native member will be likely to be on it. You wouldn't be able, you're buying the pillar and the idea of the, of the project. The art itself would cycle and it wouldn't determine who's on it, just like you're going to be a fur bench to make sure that it doesn't become like we own this pillar kind of concept. I think it's a fantastic concept. It's a great way to bring art into the community. Yep. Um, and I like, I like that you thought, you know, about how to bring it past the, the arts district as well. Yeah. Um, you know, bring, it, bring other pieces into Victoria Key so that people coming through those areas also know that potentially there's... Yeah there's something happening up there. Well, I'm trying to also, like, you, there's always a complication when you start buying art because eyes, sure. art is in the eye beholder. So when yeah. the city purchases these pieces of art, some people don't like how they purchase the art when it was their tax money. So this is staying exclusively, again, tax-free. Got to keep saying it. Everybody keeps coming after me for that one. There is no tax money other than insulation, and it should be fairly nominal. And also the maintenance uh, will also be taken care of through the sales. We're going to keep, the, we're going to get the Arts Council to keep the money so when there is a, if there is damage or um, something goes wrong with the pillar, we'll be able to rectify that with cash. So again, the city's not being asked, you know, down the road to start throwing cash at it as well. That's great. Thank okay. you. Councillor Sobey, then Councillor Paulson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was stationed in Shermanus for many years, and I concur with Councillor Minions as into how art is usually respected and protected and all that. Uh, I have two questions. Number one, uh, have you ever, there's a lot of, empty uh, um, 
mural potential areas in our community. Yep. Uh, in the perspective of art, has that ever been approached uh, to bring and be able to express the heritage of Port Alberni to actually have these murals? Yep. We have a lot of some graffiti uh, still on there yep. that the property owners are not really addressing, but uh, has that concept ever been brought up? Yeah, well, actually, well, along Argyle, we've already seen that the Women's Business Network has actually been together and they've actually been sponsoring uh, artworks to be done, and I expect that that's going to continue. We made sure to connect with them, making uh, very clear that, that we're not going to be stepping on their toes. Their project is their project, and we wholly encourage it, and that the pillars themselves are kind of a standalone but also a, a collaborative effort. You know, yeah. we can now start, if this works out and we get the amount of pieces that I'm hoping to see you can probably send someone to the arts district okay. and they'll be able to see art and they'll be able to interact and it should help uh, businesses that are very um, congruent to that to actually be see more of that business to open up as well. And uh, no, I truly appreciate that comment. My second question, uh, I could see a lot of being volunteers with the citizens on patrols and so forth and, and what we're doing with the high visibility patrols in town that will have a lot of stuff to be looking out for. Uh, my next question is this concept in this initiative is uh, it's totally what we need in our community. But this concept is open to the whole community, is it not? Including Northport, because it'd be the, awesome to see something like this. The, in the arts, Johnson yeah. Quarter. So there is no restriction on it. What we're trying to do is we're trying to fill our arts district. If if there's more need and we need to move it over to Northport, that's certainly a, a case. Uh, the one other thing to also comment on: the art itself is going to be restricted to the Greater Valley only. So we're not going to be having Victoria artists or Qualica Beach artists. The idea is that it from uh, Tofino, Banfield, Uculet, and all the other uh, spaces in between, um, those are the people I'm trying to advocate for. That is the culture we're trying to convey to ourselves. And that has to be the focus of this. I mean, financially, it could be a good result. Most of the artists I've talked to, I'm putting the onus on cultural heritage, cultural importance. And they want to speak to the community through their art. And that's, what make, that's what's getting them excited far more than making money. I mean, honestly, most of them don't even need to make money. They're doing this because they want to do something for their community. But this concept is open for Northport. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. But the, the idea, of course, we're going to be focusing on, on the art rotary on the arts district yes. because that's the arts district. Yeah. If we fill it up to a certain point, there's no reason we, we can't move it over to Johnston. Okay. And I would actually encourage at least a few pieces to come over there because then we can come see more inside the city kind of scenario. But like, again, it has to be kind of make sure that we're doing this cultural kind of part first. Okay. Right. Councillor Paulson. No pressure, Kevin. No pressure. First cruise ship's 11 months away. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the sooner you say yes, the sooner they start coming on the thing. Anyway, um, I, I, I absolutely love the, uh, the concept. And once again, I live. You live right there? Just, yeah. <laughs> you put one in my, my house and actually you see, you used me as one of your sculptures. Oh, yeah, there. the, think the, the yeah. thinker. Okay. Was good. it the bearer or the thinker? <laughs> the, the thinker. Actually, just, I think the job for us is you're asking for an in-kind um, uh, donation from the city or to figure out how we can get these things installed with, obviously, with our labor. So I think yep. we need to go back and figure out how we can get that done. And I don't want to put um, Director Thorpe on the spotlight, but I'm not sure when the next in intake is for a community investment program which is oversubscribed, but I think it might be a great project for that. Um, and I'm not, just not sure what's within our budget to, for community projects that we already have. So I think we need to have that information, but I think let's, let's get started. Right. So have fun with it. Well, the, the initial investment would be literally uh, 16 bolts and the time to bolt it down. Uh, the city workers can easily pull this off by just drilling holes in the ground and bolting into the ground. So it's not an expensive thing. They pull benches and put benches in on a daily basis. So it really effectively is the same thing. Um, as far as the electrics concerned and lighting on those four corners, that was where we would be looking at, you know, other investment. So, so uh, Councillor Paulson, did you want to make a motion to see what could uh, happen on to move this one forward together with, uh, with uh, our city works? Yes, and I think that would involve a staff report. So a motion to have staff come back. Oh, motion to have staff come back with a um, report on um, the in-kind service that's been requested here tonight and how we could uh, participate. I'll second that motion, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Minions. I just wonder if it's um, if this requires a staff report or if our city manager. Like, I don't know. Do or we have information on this? Is it or. sure? But um, it sounds like it's 
next to no time. I'm just wondering if this is something that requires waiting to get a report or if we have information on it already. I mean, we've we've known that this concept was coming, so just so curious. CAO, is this something we can make a decision on this evening or is this something that we need a couple weeks? Mr. Mayor, uh, Council can make a decision tonight or you can wait um, if you like. I would suggest if you want to make a decision tonight that you uh, add two, two caveats to it. One, that um, the city's engineering department approve any siting or locations of the art, and uh, two, that the Rotary Arts District um, provide a letter of support. They've provided a letter of support in principle, um, and we will be, given that we have a partnership with Rotary um, on that Arts District corridor, um, we'd like a more firm letter of support from them on this project. Okay, so uh, Councillor Paulson, how does that impact your Well, motion? no, I, I like that, but my biggest uh, question is where from the city finances are we going to pay for the in-kind service? And I, I want to pay for it, but I just want to know if it's going to come from the investment program or if it's going to, if we already have a fund that can do this. Within. So I, I just need that information. Okay. Uh, Councillor Sylvia, are you seconding the motion? I'm seconding that motion. Uh, Thank you. Uh, and I think it's a prudent one uh, that the motion be placed. Uh, with the, it's the electrical that I'm worried about. Yeah, well, I'm not, we're, we're not actually asking for any electrical okay. to be done at all right now. If it's just a bolt and all that. It's literally 16 bolts to be drilled in the Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Thank you. I'll second that motion, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Any clarify what the motion is now? <laughs> yes. Uh, City Clerk, can you just read that motion back, please? Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think it got a little sidetracked, so I'm not entirely sure. It was The motion that was made was um, that staff provide a report on funding um, the in-kind services. But I'm not sure if that's now. That's all right. So it's a staff report, essentially. Sorry? A staff report regarding in-kind services. Is that the motion? Yeah. Okay. And so this, the earliest we'd be going, we'd be giving formal approval on this would be two weeks from now on, on July the 9th. Okay. Um, uh, Pastor Sobe? I'm going to withdraw my seconding on this because I feel that this, if it's just a matter of bolting and all that, I think this could, motion could be addressed tonight <coughs> and deal with it right away. My concerns was the electrical, and we all know that takes time and efforts, mm -hmm. but if it's simple uh, installation and so forth, uh, I'm prepared to make the motion to move on this tonight. Okay. Um, um, well, well, first off, let's deal with this. Let's deal with the, we'll d deal with the motion. Is there a seconder for that motion? Mr. Mayor, I'm not sure you can withdraw seconding a motion. So there is a motion on the floor. So the mover can withdraw the motion. We could, we, it's been seconded, we could vote on it and defeat it and come up with a different motion. Right? Okay, thank you. Um, any further discussion? Okay, on the motion, all those in favor? Guess I gotta vote for my own motion. <laughs> Opposed? Hey, the motion's defeated. So, I'm, I'm go prepared ahead, to make Sobe. the second motion that we move on this initiative immediately with the in kind gesture of installation of these uh, 16 bolts. I don't want to get too specific, but let's leave it to that. But he go. said 16 bolts, so I'm assuming that's four <laughs> pillars. Four bolts per pillar, yes. Okay. Yeah, no, that. this is truly for and, beautification. And we have airport. a seconder. Councillor Minions wishes to speak. Uh, just to clarify, are we including in that motion that the engineering department needs to sign off on um, placement of the art and the Rotary, Rotary Arts District um, provide their support? Yes. Okay. okay, so then the motion would be with the, uh, with the additional two items. Uh, all those in favor of the motion? Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Look forward to a whole new exciting chapter and hope it's more than 16 volts from now on. <laughs> uh, this brings us council to our uh, second delegation and it's Mr. Pat Squire. Mr. Squire, come forward. So Pat, dollars to donuts, you're not a resident of Port Alberni, but uh, I bet you were at one time. Yes, I was gonna bring, the, oh, my name is Pat Squire. I live at 126 Howard Avenue in, in Nanaimo. But I wanted to bring that as, as my opening point that I don't come, as, come to this meeting as an outsider. Uh, I do own property in this town. I took a rundown duplex and fixed it all up, got proper tenants in, much to the delight of my neighbors there, and it was a commitment on that part. I was born and raised here. 
went all the way through school. Both of those schools are gone now, raised. Uh, my parents came here in 1939. Actually, looking at these photographs, my father was a counselor back in time for quite a few years. So I'm just now I noticed these photographs on the side. Um, actually, um, on the 13th of this month, I gave out a bursary at the awards night for the high school to uh, this young lady's name, Tiger Lily Coffee, young lady going on to future education. Uh, I do that annually. Uh, my parents, their commitment to this town and my sort of connection to this town. So that's continuing on. Uh, and over the years, I've uh, come back and organized, I help organize the teen town reunions. There were three of them, quite large ones in this community. And I've organized my last three class reunions. And it was at the last class reunion in my opening address to the class on the, our main night that I made a commitment to them to uh, rectify, it's not a major problem, but it's a historically incorrect as a sign on the bridge that goes over the Somash River. The sign says historically uh, the Orange Bridge and that is quite incorrect. Uh, when we were kids, it was silver. We referred to it as the Silver Bridge. When anything happened, you were giving directions. You said go to the Silver Bridge, turn to go to the lake, or go to Paper Mill Dam. There was accidents there over the years, tragedies of kids drowning. It was always referred to at or near the Silver Bridge. Um, I had several classmates say to me, thank God they finally painted it silver again. So I, I've been at this, for, it, it got sidetracked for a while because I contacted highways oh, almost a couple of years ago and they never got back to me and I got busy again and then uh, I've contacted them again and it's uh, Brad Boyden is in charge of the bridges, all this part of Vancouver Island, I don't know how far, I, but at least that one. The bridge was put in in 1952. Um, it was mostly prefabricated in England and it was silver at that time. Um, so somewhere along the line, uh, and doing further research to your chief executive officer here the other day informed me that somebody came before council, I don't know if it was this council or a previous council that's here nor there at this point, but it was a presentation by somebody to council to have that sign put up. Now, not to be down on them, they're obviously too young to know the fact that it wasn't always orange or they think history begins when they were born. So you can't leave the sign. It's not a major thing, but to my classmates and I, it's totally incorrect. And you can't modify it to say historically, say, or you could put something, it was an interim period that it was orange. I, I actually, it's kind of a bit of an irritation to me for years. I am, my father and I, and I, we've always been interested in history. And just as we correctly at the beginning of your meeting, we have come to the point of acknowledging where we are. We're not, not on the land of the English settlers or the Spanish who our town is named after, but the First Nations people. Now this isn't anywhere near the significance of that, but it is historically incorrect. And I made this promise to my classmates and uh, I would hope that that could be rectified. Highways doesn't want to touch it until they get an okay from you. Uh, Mr. Boyden has been quite helpful through this whole process, but he, he did the research to find out how it actually got there, which the previous person in his position didn't bother to do. Just kind of left it and never found out. So it's not a major thing, but it is something, it's just like somebody putting a sign up where the old school, you, you know, we had a previous discussion. I was very interested in what was going to happen to the old photographs that were in the high school. And I've followed them around as they have went to the other high school and then ended up in the museum. And uh, I am interested. I've donated things. I, recently, I donated uh, photographs on the steps of this uh, city hall, ones from my father's archives, and they're now in the possession of your local museum. So. Uh, I hopefully City Council could correct this wrong and 
hopefully they don't get stuck in the position that bureaucracies often judicial ones and literary governments, once they've made a decision, they don't like changing it, even when it's been pointed out that a mistake was made. Nothing was intentional here. It just nobody did their full research when that sign, the request was made and was authorized to go up. So hopefully council can see their way to have that changed and I can inform my classmates <laughs> when we have our next reunion. <laughs> that was our 50th. So we're changing, you, what you're proposing is to change it from formerly the Orange Bridge to just no name or change it to the Silver Bridge or change it to Riverbend Bridge? What, are you, what well, do you want to do? Well, that could be a point of discussion, but the sign says historically the Orange Bridge, which is incorrect. Right, okay. So it could be, if you want to put a history of it, you know, I, I, could, I could go with that to satisfy those people that grew up having it as an orange bridge. Actually, when I came to talk to both your city clerk and chief executive officer, the young lady in your lower floor here, that's all she knew. She said, oh, I thought it was orange. I said, nope. It was silver for a good 20 years of its life, and we had to put up with being orange for that period. So, you know, I don't want to have one or the other. We could have something more, but to clarify history. Simple as that. So this sounds like a task for the museum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they need some authorization because the directive was given by city council. Councilor McClemon. Yes. Well, th thanks for the uh, entertainment and the uh, information. Um, would, would John Squires have been your father then? Yes, he was the MLA here. Yeah, that's correct. And if I know cor remember correctly, the Labor Council made a bursary for him as well. And yes. Or maybe that's the one you give out. I no, uh, this one is a personal one from the family for both my mother and my father. Mm, that's okay. Uh, just curious, but there was a bridge there before 1952. No, but this was the metal one. That was an earlier one. No, that was green. Well, it may be, but the one that we're referring to is the existing. We just got to go back far okay. enough before you, you, we you think could, that the... You could put that in, too. <laughs> I don't we're, care. We're going to need a big sign there. <laughs> I, I don't really mind. People call it the Orange Bridge, and I'm not hung up one way or another. But just well. see what happens. But okay. it just... Oh, sorry? Oh. <laughs> it's just, you know, comments from the peanut gallery out ah, there. So. Yes. <laughs> um, Pat, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for your, uh, your proposal. It is certainly something, I'm not sure if council is prepared to make a motion this evening, but it's, it's certainly something that we will, will uh, Whoop. take into consideration. Council, uh, Councillor Alamany. Uh, just off of that, I guess, would this be something that we could refer to the Heritage Commission or something like that, just to get it, an idea of what, what we could do? It is something that would be a great thing for the Heritage Commission, commission to, uh, to look at. I, I, I think it's really interesting. I mean, my, my personal history only goes back to 1977, so well, I, only know it, I only know it as the Orange Bridge. Um, but I, I think it's great to know a full history of, of something, right? Uh, that's important for any community. So uh, why don't we refer it to the, to the Heritage Commission to this, take a look at Just it. a question in my understanding. Is the Heritage Commission separate or a part of a committee of the city? It's a commission of the city. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah. And I bet you if we go back far enough because of this, the, uh, the strategic importance of that particular spot, I bet there's a First Nations name there too. Yep. So we could have all, have all, all sorts of names. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to open up. You know, it's just... <laughs> uh, could be a good thing. Yeah. It's might a be street, a pretty interesting so can of worms. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Wouldn't have to change any addresses in order to make it happen. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll make the motion then that we uh, we take your your concerns and we uh, we t uh, take them to the uh, the Heritage Commission and ask the uh, Heritage Commission to to review it and come back with a recommendation. I'll second the motion, Mr. Mayor. Any uh, further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, thank you. Thank you for the time. And I guess want to be uh, they have my name and number and stuff. And yeah, Pat. Thank you so much for your time as always. Uh, it's a long drive from uh, Nanaimo to Port Alberni, but not nearly as far as if we are up in Port Hardy. So thank yes, you for coming exactly. over. Yes, uh, exactly. Just one thing. I want to wish you all the best on the situation that was addressed here with the homeless situation. Nanaimo has a challenge. Yes. You're quite aware of it in the news. Yeah. It's not uh, an easy one. It's not, but it's, I mean, that's what we do. We look at these difficult challenges yeah. and we deal with it in one way or another. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I understand what Nanaimo's going through and many other communities on Vancouver Island as well. Yeah. Uh, so fortunately, we're at the point uh, where we do have the capacity to think about it and respond. 
So all the best. Thank you. Okay, council, thank you. Um, brings us to unfinished business. And the um, first item is uh, from the manager of uh, human resources, the uh, audit committee. Uh, Councillor Washington, I'm wondering if you can uh, make that motion, please. Certainly, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report from the manager of human resources dated June 15, 2018, providing revised council travel and development audit committee report be re received. I'll second that motion, Mr. Mayor. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carried. And, Council, we have a notice of motion from June the 11th. And, uh, Councillor Alamani? And the motion is that staff be directed to provide a report regarding payments, purpose, and provision of any contracts to John Van Dyke by the City of Port Alberta. Is there a seconder? I'll second that motion, Mr. Mayor. Uh, any discussion, Council? Councillor McClemmon? Yeah, I, I'm not sure this needs a motion. I think just a question to staff would would handle that. Uh, I, I've asked a few questions about it since it came up and was all over Facebook and et cetera. And it seems like this individual has been around for quite a long time and has had many, many projects that he wished to be paid for and they didn't all make out so well. Okay, uh, Councillor Sobe? No, I, I just... I tend to agree, but uh, in the spirit of true transparency and accountability, let's get an answer. It's put out there and put this to rest. Okay. Um, anybody else? Then on the motion, all those in favor? Opposed? Uh, motion. To come once again, all, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. And uh, from Director of, uh, of uh, Development Services, uh, topics on truck routes, uh, next steps. We have a report providing information previously uh, completed by the City of Port Alberni on designated truck routes and outlining potential next steps. Uh, Councillor Paulson, I'm wondering if you uh, can make those two motions, please. Uh, I'd like to move that the report dated June 19th, 2018 from the Director of Development Services providing information regarding previous work completed on a possible truck route be received. Is there a seconder? I'll second that motion, Mr. Mayor. Any discussion, Council? All those in favour? Motion's carried. The Council for the City of Port Alberni directs staff to bring forward a project for consideration in the 2019 budget to move forward in establishing a truck route in the city of Port Alberni. And I'll second that motion, Mr. Mayor. Any discussion, Council? Councilor McClellan? Yes, Mr. Mayor, this obviously is not new. It's been going on since prior to me getting on Council, and it, it kind of went on the back burner when the uh, logs started to be exported, I guess, and we didn't really want to spend a lot of money helping that happen. However, um, I, I don't think that this is, like this report, the old one is talking about a route that was never considered to be a truck route, some kind of circle route that maybe was there. And we had hoped to have a, a route outside of town. But uh, I, we have to get back to looking at our har Harbor Road uh, truck route. We almost had it at the last council. And unfortunately, uh, some members of council angered the company that was going to give us the, the land and help us out and the negotiations ended. So um, I think this motion should also should include uh, looking at that proposal and we had a lot of the funding made up for it as well and see what can be done. We, uh, I'm not making an amendment because I'm talking too much about it but we want, I've already heard from people that want to have a a roundabout on Third Avenue and really you know we, we can't tell the trucks they can't go there I tried that and was told I can't do that in many languages so uh, if they were to go down to second it's unsafe time they come up again at the far end so I, I think that the first thing we have to do is get our truck route and then consider things like either a boulevard which we had before on Third Avenue and then came out right away and the, People that wanted it suddenly didn't. And that was one of my first experiences in town watching that happen, but still that's okay. And maybe a boulevard's better than a roundabout, and maybe it's not, but they, it's something they can look at. But I don't think we can do anything until we take the trucks off Third Avenue, and I, it's about the only place for them to go. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sobey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I really would love this council to address this issue once and for all yeah. and not pass it to any other council. Uh, this is a situation that we've been addressed as for the roundabout in the uptown uh, under the Motor Vehicle Act there's certain specific guidelines it has to meet uh, but the true purpose is is to intercept trucks for not being going there I, I think it's very important that we get this report from the uh, staff in uh, so we could move on this and then sooner the better but I truly believe we need to work with the industry Instead of alienating them, we need to work with them and get something going. Thank you. Yep, yeah. uh, Councillor Alamani. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I can't support the motion only because it's so specific in that it says in the city of Port Alberni. Um, I think that limits us, and and I don't think we're there yet anyway. I think we need um, a we we need to finish the the due diligence that we started with the truck count. Um, which we never actually got, you know, full a full report from. Uh, we turned down that uh, uh, that study uh, in the last budget. So I think we ha we have to at least know what it is we're dealing with first before we um, make any decisions about any kind of truck route, no matter where it is. Um, but in in general, uh, you know, I, I think we're past the point now where. Um, we need to focus on what uh, is happening in the uptown and in the Third Avenue area. Um, and if business and industry, um, business and industry will always find find their place and find their way, and and we'll be able to um, work with them as we go. But I don't think spending or committing to spend uh, many millions of dollars to put trucks on the waterfront. Uh, you know, at this point, uh, we simply don't have any kind of due diligence or planning to be able to do that. Okay, thank you. Councillor Minions and then Councillor uh, Paulson. Thank you. Um, I'll laugh a little bit that Councillor Alamani thinks the, the motion is too specific because I was going to comment that I thought it was too vague. <laughs> um, so um, I'm not clear on exactly what this motion is moving us closer to because it says um, direct staff to bring forward a project for consideration. Um, is this moving us closer specifically to the Harbor, Harbor Road route or are we getting more data in place um, to decide on a truck route. Um, so I guess that's my first question to the CAO. Mr. Mayor, I'll ask the Director of Development Services to respond to that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it was somewhat on purpose to be generally vague uh, because we're talking about bringing something to the 2019 budget. And I'm conscious that there's a local government election this fall. So the intention behind this was, if council gave this direction shortly there after the election, as part in getting some guidance for the budget, we'd be asking for what might the council's intent be? Because this can vary widely depending on what the community, what council and the community wants us to look at. The previous work that was in this year's budget was focusing on Harbor Road and existing road infrastructure to see if we couldn't potentially come up with a truck route without the tens of millions of dollars that the other work that we've looked at would cost. Like even the truck route along Harbor Road, you know, when we, when we did that work, was around $10 million to go from Redford to Ship Creek. The first phase of it, was four million that was to, to go through the Alberta Pacific Division area. But I don't, staff won't know if that's what in 2019 the community council will, will want. So that's why it was somewhat. Okay, thank you. I can appreciate that vagueness, that I guess. Um, so I, I agree very strongly that we need um, to address the truck issue. Um, I agree it's a problem on Third Avenue. I agree it's a problem. Anderson. Um, I can appreciate that this has gone on many councils and it would be <coughs> wonderful to be the council to solve it um, but I don't think we're in a position to do that because we don't have a route that works right now. Um, I am strongly against any 
truck route that puts trucks along the waterfront, um, the area that we're trying to develop for the community. Um, so I, I think we need a truck route, but I don't think we're there yet with a solution. If this is to, um, you know, keep it an item of high priority so that in 2019, whoever the council is decides the direction of it, but it's not forgotten, then I certainly support that. Um, but not if it's moving us closer to a waterfront route. Okay, Councillor Washington. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, Councilor Minion, you took the words right out of my mouth. I just want to keep moving forward on this. Uh, like Councilor McClellan said, uh, the council of the past, uh, before most of, most of you, uh, was doing great guns and then something went wrong. Uh, I don't want to say what went wrong, but something went wrong and it stalled and it stalled for just about four years. So, uh, no, I just want to just keep it moving. So, like, like Councilor Minion said, let, let's keep it on the books, let's keep it going, and uh, let's keep moving. Yeah, I, uh, I agree that we need to uh, focus on, on addressing the issue. Um, and wherever it happens to go, uh, and I recognize that we only have so much money in order to address this. Uh, so I'm not afraid of this particular motion. I think it's, uh, it's not a bad motion to keep it, keep it there. Um, we're going to have to have a bigger uh, discussion about exactly where it, where it goes. Uh, any solution that we look at uh, could go from hundreds of thousands to millions. And it depends on what we choose to do as, uh, as a city. So it's not inexpensive in terms of time or in terms of money, but to think that we're going to solve it in the remaining life of this council probably is not realistic. Council McClellan? Yeah, I'd just like to, to comment on the concept of not using Harbour Road. The only other place, uh, without buying a bunch of houses and bulldozing them down and bringing it in city limits, is outside city limits. And we actually have, if you notice on your um, program here, at the, the Binney diagrams are outside city limits. But they were conditional on getting the Horn Lake connector. It's all Island Timberland's property, and they were quite prepared, as well as Western, to pl plug in, to drive around if they could come from the north end of the island without driving all the way through Parksville. And it, it made sense. We did not, because of the previous government's Department of Highways, we did not get that. We didn't always have 100% support from all, all the councillors looking for that. But that, that's me that as it may. Uh, that's where the most ideal truck route would be. It wouldn't do all the trucks because some come from the West Coast and they wouldn't want to be driving up and around, but it would be a, a big help. So what, what you're looking at is an idealism, but right now trucks are on the waterfront. Trucks go to the uh, assembly wharf, trucks go to the mills, trucks go to the uh, dry land sorts and, and the uh, booming ground. So they're there, let's do it properly. And unless we can convince this government to put in the Horn Lake connector and that road around there, it's going to be difficult because we don't have control of outside city limits is the problem. I tried. It didn't work. Uh, Councillor uh, Paulson. I'm like <laughs> Councillor Washington. I want to make sure that we keep this moving forward. Uh, this council has been talking about this for four years. And we're still kind of back at square one uh, and thank you very much for the report and the the options that have been in the past but when I look at the options um, the one option uh, which kind of goes along the city um, boundaries actually goes within probably less than 50 yards of the of the hospital um, that's a non-starter for me and also the cost is a non-starter I mean I think you're looking at probably 20 million, 30 million in today's dollars. So what I'd like to see us do is narrow down the options to what we could potentially be able to afford. There's stuff out here that, that really are kind of dreams and out there and will never get done. And you know what was said earlier here is if we don't do anything, we don't get anything done. And um, I would hope well, it's probably going to be the next council now, but uh, I'm disappointed that we haven't moved forward on this. And we need to get the trucks off of 3rd Avenue. We need to get them off of Anderson Avenue. And what is the most affordable solution that could actually, in all reality, we could get done? 
the circle routes, the cost is prohibitive unless, unless the one that comes out from the Horn Lake connector, the provincial government would kick in all of the funds because it's, it's going to be 30 or $40 million. Okay. Anyway, that's just a comment. I have. Thank you. A last word to Councillor Alamany. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a final kind of what, off what the, the Director of Development Services said, um, you know, around, you know, the, the life of the council. Uh, the way around that issue is, is through public input, um, right? If, if, this is a, if this is addressed as a, 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 an issue for the entire community, then, um, you know, we can have a full discussion and it's not just the council that would make the decision, it'd be the community that make the decision. So, um, so that's a way around that, right? Um, but I do think it's very important and, and I don't know what the plan would be for this to come through to the budget, but it's very important that we have some sort of data to, to go on. So I think if this were to go forward to whatever the next council was, um, it, we need to have that, uh, that information or the council needs to ha have that information to make any kind of decision. Thank you. From the chamber, uh, Councillor Minions. Thank you. I just wanted to um, comment that this actually recently came to the Chamber of Commerce Board, and they um, suggested bringing it forward to their um, Civic Affairs Committee in September and then trying to work with the city on creating a plan because they agreed that the plan we have might not be in the best interest long term for the city. So I think what Councillor Alamany is suggesting is more community conversation on this to make sure the plan we have is the right one. Um, and the chamber might be a good place to start with that. Okay, so on the motion, uh, counts, uh, all those in favor of the motion? Opposed? The motion is carried. <coughs> okay, that brings us then, Council, to uh, staff reports. The first one is on accounts. Uh, Councillor Washington, could you please make that motion? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the certification of the Director of Finance dated June 25, 2018 be received and checks numbered 141712 to 141791 inclusive and payments of accounts totaling $348,762.57 be approved. I'll second. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, from the Director of uh, Parks, Recreation and Heritage, uh, Vulnerable Persons Protection Policy. Thank you. Uh, in front of you this evening, you have a draft vulnerable persons protection policy uh, in front of you for approval. Uh, I wanted to bring attention to two highlights of the proposed policy update. So the first one would be updating the language of child to vulnerable person, which includes both anyone under the age of 19 years old, as well as anyone who, because of their age, disability, or other circumstance, are more vulnerable than others which better reflects the community of which we serve, as opposed to just referring to uh, protecting youth or minors. I think it's important that we, we include all vulnerable persons in our policy. And secondly, in the current uh, policy manual, um, it includes the policy statement and the manual as, as sort of concurrent documents uh, in the policy, and we'd like to look at separating the policy level statements into the policy, which is attached in my report this evening, uh, that would be adopted by City Council. And then the manual would be uh, reviewed by myself from time to time as the department head and updated accordingly, as opposed to bringing the entire policy and the manual back to Council anytime we wish to make um, a change in language or a change in how we uh, impart our manual. So those are the two, two main uh, highlights there. And I'll turn it over to Council if you have any questions. Okay, Councilor McClellan. Yeah, um, I, I don't see the policy here. All I see is we're changing child to vulnerable person. And I, I don't quite grasp the definition of vulnerable person. So I'm wondering what we're voting on. Okay, so on th page 32 of your agenda package is the policy. So it's one page. Uh, I'm not sure if the rest of council sees it in their package. Well, on, on page 32 under procedures, it says, number one, management shall ensure that a vulnerable, vulnerable person's protection policy and manual are in place. So I'm taking from that that they're not in place. And, and I'm voting on something I haven't seen. That's what's concerning me. Okay, so again, just to recap from... Uh, the second bullet point on page 30. So as it stands currently, the policy statement and the manual itself, so uh, they're included as one document essentially in, 
in the policy manual. And so what that means is anytime we wish to make any change whatsoever to how I implement the program as staff, I need to come back to council. Whereas what the, the report is suggesting or the recommendation is that we carve out the policy, which is a statement you see in front of you on page 32, and the manual, which is updated, which is now 17 pages as opposed to 22 in previous, that's kept separate. So I have the ability at a, at a staffing level to be able to train my people as, um, as situations evolve without having the need to come back and bog council down. That said, we still will always meet the policy directive, which is the one pager on page 32. So we'll always follow the, the want of council um, without getting caught in logistics of how we train our staff. So you're saying that that one paragraph is the entire policy? Correct, the policy statement is there on the screen under policy. The manual is a separate document, which I'd be happy to circulate to council if they desire, which is 17 pages of how we implement the policy directive on the screen. So the policy essentially is what we are covering and the how we cover it would come in, in the manual itself. Okay, uh, I'm still not clear on what the policy is unless that's all there is and if that's all there is, I'm not sure. Uh, CAO, you have clarification? Mr. Mayor, just to clarify, the policy that council is being asked to um, make a decision on now is that full page. And the, so the policy includes a policy statement, a rationale, and, a, and procedures, all very high level, all at the policy level, policy setting level, which is where council um, it should be making decisions. Uh, Director Thorpe is, is um, asking you to approve a policy and she's removed from the, the previous policy all the procedural operational parts that never should have been in the, in the policy in the first place. So she, that, is, that is purely operational and will change from time to time as situations arise without coming back to council. So just what's, just what's on page 32? That's correct. Okay, uh, Councillor Sobe? Yeah, I just wanted to um, make sure we covered a vulnerable person and I notice uh, in your report under the age of 19, but we also include senior citizens in this, do we not? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, so as it describes uh, in the definition on, on the first bullet there on page 30, is that it's two parts. First of all, based on age. So we, yes. we in the city of Port Alberni consider anyone under the age of 19, regardless of circumstance, to be yes. a vulnerable person. And in addition, based on circumstance, we would consider one of the citizens of any age. So for instance, we would have vulnerable persons as part of our Sunshine Club. Um, we could have vulnerable persons of any age. And that's part of when you look at this, the last time this policy was, was updated, it was 1997. And of course, the world is a very different place. And so that's why I think it's important to update that language. So yes, Councillor Sauvé, okay. that's, that's correct. That Thank is both age-based and circumstance-based. So just uh, one, for me, one clarification, and, and maybe it's just because I uh, just wasn't aware. Uh, number five under procedures, it says copies of any custody access orders shall be kept when appropriate. I, I wasn't aware. What would be the circumstances under which uh, the city would be given uh, custody access orders? Typically in situations where you have, say, summer camps where we've got, uh, we're navigating or monitoring how uh, children are dropped off to and from programs. So in the event that there are family members that are welcome to pick up their children, we would document that, staff would document that on a list so we know that only those folks that are safe to pick up those children may do so. So okay. really that's the only time that we'd be looking at custody orders just to ensure safety of participants. Gotcha. I understand now. Thank you. Uh, any other clarification, Council? Uh, then uh, Councillor Minions, are you prepared to make that motion? That the report from the Director of Parks, Recreation and Heritage dated June 18th, 2018 be received and Council for the City of Port Alberni endorse the Vulnerable Persons Protection Policy as presented. Second, Mr. Mayor. Sir, any further question? All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? Carried. Uh, Director of uh, Development Services, uh, Wastewater Treatment Facility. Um, thank you, uh, Director Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So uh, the City of Port Alberni has worked, been working for several years now uh, towards major upgrades of the city's wastewater treatment uh, infrastructure. 
as part of moving towards uh, the beginning of construction of that project, two requests for proposals were issued for equipment. Uh, one was for a UV disinfection system and one was for an aeration system uh, equipment. Um, now this project had a significant amount of uh, stakeholder involvement and public information. However, there has been uh, some time since that we haven't updated recently as the detailed engineering work has been progressing. The city is working on a communications outreach program to update, update uh, council and the community. Uh, we hope to involve a number of approaches of that and we'll start that in, in the middle of July around that. Um, Associated uh, Engineering, who is our main uh, contractor who's been help or consultant who's been helping us with this, has reviewed the two proposals um, and are recommending that they be accepted. Both the UV system and the aeration system equipment costs are within the expected cost ranges that they have put out for the overall project. Uh, once, if Council uh, accepts these, both these equipment contracts will be part of the main construction contract. That's actually, the contractor will actually do all the, the building and stuff. These, they'll know, here's the equipment that's been selected that will be part of the project for, for construction. And we hope to issue that request for proposal for the main construction contract, uh, hopefully by the end of June, early July. And of course, those uh, prices will then come back to council, uh, we're hoping in August. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Smith. Um, Councilor McClemon, I'm wondering if you're prepared to uh, make yes, these uh, motions. Um, just one question before I make the motion. These sure. are installed prices? One of them I saw installed. I didn't see, notice the other one. Um, that, I'm not 100% sure. Some of the, the installation will be required to be installed under the main construction contract. Okay. Well, this has taken a long time and it certainly has and it's way too much money. However, I'll make this motion that the report dated June 20th, 2018 from Director of Development Services regarding the award of two equipment contracts for the wastewater treatment facility, re facility project be received. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. Any discussion? Uh, Councillor Washington. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, don't mean to put you on the spot, Mr. Smith. Um, the aeration system, does that include what the layman would call the bubbler system for, for aeration? Yeah, essentially, but it's a subsurface okay. aeration system. Uh, and please don't get me into the technical no, design. No, no, no. It's, it's but just it's not the above ground aerators that we have that in we our have existing right lagoon. Okay, this is they're, a better they're, system. They're what we've seen before where they're subsurface aeration okay. system. Okay, no, it's a better system than we have right now. Then. Yeah, oh, yes, okay. far Thank superior. You. Yeah, okay. On the motion then, all those in favor? Carried. And uh, in second motion, um, Councilor McClellan. That the Council of the City of Port Alberni award contract RFP 0015-18 UV equipment supply to XLM Canada Company for $835,578 and no cents plus GST. Is there a seconder? Second, Mr. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carried. And for the third one, Councilor McClellan. The Council of the City of Port Alberni award contract RFP 016-18, aeration system to Nexom Inc. for $1,837,000 and no cents plus GST. Second, Mr. Mayor. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much, Council. Uh, it's great to uh, get this next stage going, even though those are huge numbers. If we say them fast enough, we don't notice. Um, <laughs> we know what the total is, $27 million. But it's important for our community. Um, City Clerk, uh, we have uh, cabinet minister meetings uh, from 2018, about the 2018 uh, UBCM convention. Um, council, we have a report uh, requesting council provide detailed information uh, in regard to meeting requests. Uh, City Clerk, did you provide any additional direction to council on this? Uh, only, Mr. Mayor, that um, deadlines are approaching, and in order for us to make um, meeting requests, we do need to have topics, and then ultimately we need to have background information as well to support. Okay, so the, I'll go the over those requests, once so. we uh, vote on this motion and just clarify those those yeah. deadlines with council. 
Uh, Councilor McClemon, are you able to uh, make this motion? Yes, Mr. Mayor, and I'd like to thank our clerk for giving us all the background here and take a bit of reading before I write out my proposals. But the report from the city clerk dated January the 20th, 2018, requesting council provide detailed information regard to meeting requests with the premier and cabinet ministers at the upcoming UBCM convention be received. Second, Mr. Mayor. Any discussion? Councillor um, Paulson. First of all, I'd like to thank Councillor Alamani and Councillor McClemon for um, pulling these particular departments out and putting the names to them. And um, I would I would love to be added as a second, um, if we could, to municipal housing. And we can do this later, I guess. Yeah, but yeah. Let's, we can do yeah. it later. Municipal housing, forest, and transportation. Okay, um, Councillor McClemon. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't know if you need a motion to do it, but. Um, no, I will. I'll make a motion that council... We, we have what, this motion that we Didn't we, have we to... vote on that one yet? Not yet. No. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't receive it, then I'll be quiet till we... Yeah, Councillor Minions? Are we just receiving the report right now, or are we talking about just if we meeting. want further meetings? Uh, well, first off, we're just receiving the report. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, on the motion then, all those in favour? Opposed? Carried. So, council, just before we uh, go on to uh, Councillor Minions clarification, Basically, um, if, if there is no topic f provided, then it's impossible to, uh, to set up the meeting because the, the minister requires the backgrounders, their staff requires the backgrounder. Often, uh, the, uh, that's the only information that they have in order to set themselves up for their 15-minute meeting. Uh, so we want the, the list of the ministers by this Friday, June 29th, and, and the information to follow up on the topics no later than July 4th. So if you put that in your, in your sort of thinking, this is what we're looking for. Uh, Councillor Minions, for clarification. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think the one to me that's missing here is, um, given what's happening uptown, uh, meeting with the Minister of Mental Health and Addiction. Um, I would very much like to um, add that to our list. And I don't have a specific on that yet, but um, I'm sure with um, Ellen from ACAUSE, maybe um, we could have a quick chat with the CMHA and other organizations to, um, to yeah, yeah. To, to nail down a more um, specific ask or um, topic that we can talk about, but I think we should certainly be having a meeting with them to start. Yeah, you've got some time to put that together. Just make sure you get it to the city clerk and give the rationale for it. Councillor McClemon? Yeah, and, and uh, if we get it in time and the city clerk can bring it back to the next meeting, we can agree on what we're meeting on I'm not one of us going with a and the other asking for the opposite that's uh, that's why we wanted why we're going with these deadlines and the other the other reason is uh, we want to make sure that what we're asking for is not in in any way conflicting with what the ACRD is asking for we want to make that's sure we're, yeah. we're kind of smart with what we ask and uh, we usually try and, and work to, in concert with and them. not have too many asks either or they'll all be ignored yeah it's becomes a, an empty exercise if you have too many asks for sure Anything else, Council? Okay, so I think we've got our uh, clarification. We've got our marching orders on that one. Thank you, Council. Uh, Council, that brings us uh, to number five, the current status report. Are there any specific questions on the status report? Councilor McClemon? The only question I have for tonight is uh, where are we with our wonderful Arrowview Hotel? Uh, I noticed Smith. that the next door neighbor is fixing up his roof and in, in keen anticipation we're going to get rid of that thing beside him. Towards trying to get uh, bid pricing for for the demolition of it. Okay, um, my uh, my understanding is that the uh, the next door neighbor is putting on solar panels on his roof, uh, just in anticipation of that building coming down. <laughs> Wasn't aware of it. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, any uh, anything else on the status report? Okay, thank you. Uh, a motion to receive the status report, then, please. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Any seconder? I'll second that, Mr. Uh, all those in favor? Carried. Um, council, that uh, then brings us to the one manager's monthly report. We have this, this uh, meeting from Parks, Recreation, and Heritage. Welcome back. Thank you. So in front of you, you have my monthly report and two items that I wanted to bring to your attention. First of all, the capital projects list uh, on page 66. 
Uh, so that is the current capital projects list, both broken down by the projects in progress as well as those that are complete. And I uh, just wanted to commit formally to Council that it's our intention that 100% of these projects will be complete in the year 2018. We will not have any rollover projects into 2019. And secondly, we start orientation this week of the 32 students that are joining our Alberta Ambassadors of Awesomeness uh, summer programs. So we look forward to hosting those 32 uh, students from grade 9 to 11 that will be receiving work experience hours for their efforts with the department. Okay, so you ready for some questions? Absolutely. Okay, first off, thank you so much for the way in which you have put together the projects. It's really easy to, to see what the plans are and, uh, and get a sense of where you want to go. And it also makes it easier for me to ask questions. So thank you. Um, the, the two things that I wanted to focus on was the trail development uh, on, uh, on Roger Creek. Uh, and you're talking, you mentioned uh, moving the fourth bridge. Um, I'm aware of three bridges. Where's the fourth bridge? Uh, what I can do is bring all the project specifics, if you like, and forward it back uh, to council. Okay. Yeah, I'd be interested in knowing where you're planning on placing that fourth bridge. Okay. And I don't recall putting any money into budget for that, so I'm assuming it's a grant of some sort? Uh, yes, I'll, I'll confirm that as well. Okay, thank you. And then the other one is uh, Canal Beach, uh, a.k.a. Canal Waterfront Park, soon to be renamed to something else, I'm sure. Uh, the other one was the assessment uh, design cost decking. Who's doing the work on that cost decking? Because I know... For sure, we haven't put any money into budget for the, the decking of that or even approved that that's what we would have. Correct, absolutely. And so with, the, with uh, prudent project planning, so the assessment is complete of the pier pilings and it was a favorable assessment. And so the intention is to, uh, to use existing funds in the department for the design and costing of a potential decking of that of those pilings. And so that at which time when we're building the 2019 budget, we can come with a design model and a potential cost. So we're not having the conversation in the fall about wouldn't it be nice to, you know, we should really look at, at costing out or designing uh, that potential decking, uh, having that ready to go for council's consideration in the fall for the 2019 budget. So we're not consistently finding ourselves a year behind finishing any projects because we hadn't had the forethought to design or cost a potential project. But of course it would be uh, council's uh, direction whether you wish to move forward with the decking at all. Mm -hmm. And knowing where we're heading with that particular park in terms of uh, infrastructure, uh, issue of water and potential sewer there is something that we're going to have to turn our minds to and how we do or do not accomplish that. Absolutely. Uh, we can see that the, the three redwood trees that were put in there uh, aren't too happy right now, so mm -hmm. maybe look for cactus or something. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, and one last thing is that uh, the new structure at uh, Roger Creek Park is yes. an absolute winner. Um, I saw kids and families all over that um, and it hasn't even been officially finished for all that long, so uh, it's great. Yeah, I'm very pleased to see that there's not one plastic slide uh, or primary color uh, <laughs> fixture on that space. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and maybe at some point we'll be able to get the, uh, the water park there renewed. It's got to be um, pretty old. It's probably got to be there, have been there for quite a while. So. Yeah, absolutely. And actually staff had... Uh, uh, had taken the initiative as well in this in in Roger Creek there to actually repair all the spray nozzles as well prior to this season so it's actually fully functional at this stage yeah thank you uh, Councillor McClellan did you have yeah. a question yeah. yeah thank you and you've got an excellent report here but I do have a question on the canal uh, waterfront park one as well it's announcements that we made about that a previous mayor made about that park that annoyed the Western Forest products and canceled our our harbor uh, truck route. There is a restrictive covenant on, on that property that Western Forest product owns and we have agreed or at least when I groveled and apologized for someone else doing something we did promise that we would talk to them about anything we're going to do there. So I'd like to know A are we talking to them a and B they were very concerned about this because of the booming grounds just offshore 
and the safety, people going out there, uh, getting on them, you fall off a boom, get underneath, you don't come back up always. Mm -hmm. So it, it is a safe issue. I know there used to be some signs saying thou shalt not swim here because of the stuff in the water and on the, on the ground. I don't know if they're still there or not. So I, I do have a problem. I know I stuck my own neck out and pulled in a few things that I happen to be friends of some of the people I was sitting across from, or at least friendly to. And um, I, I just don't want to see us do something there that's going to hinder a relationship where we can get something else. Uh, and, and I do know that there's people in that corporation who just don't even like the valley, never mind anything we're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that that's a really concern of mine, and I guess I'll just leave it at that. And for some reason, uh, we don't seem to want to be talking to them too often. And I, I think we should because uh, they had they they did come back with a legal document and present it to us at that time. <clears throat> and I got to be honest, uh, when that was first given to the city for a whole buck, uh, and that. Restricted recovery was put on it by the company and we mumbled all of the day uh, Me and all everyone I, I knew in town were all excited because that restricted covenant was it had to be for creating jobs and industry Well, it didn't happen and uh, So now that's still there and when we ask them to remove it I actually have had conversations to that and it almost did happen until that other incident. So anyway We can maybe get that done Mr. Mayor, if I may? Yes. Um, so first of all, yes, to answer your first question, we are uh, in discussion with Western Forest Products. Secondly, as of 6.30 this evening when I was down at the park, the sign that uh, warns swimmers of the condition of, of the space there was, was still erected. So I'm confident that it's still there. It's pretty small, though. True. Uh, Councillor Paulson, then Councillor Alamani. Um, I just have a request as you're going forward, and it has to do with Canal Beach and the decking. Um, I would also like us to look at option B, and option B is exactly what they use at Tai Landing, our marinas, um, China Creek. Um, they use the pilings, but you have a water level uh, pier that goes up and down with, with, with the tides. And rather than just being an observation deck, a, a, a pier would actually en enable people to access the water, whether it be from kayaks or boats or, or whatever. So, and it may possibly be a cheaper option, I'm not sure. But um, it just kind of makes sense to me. In a Taiyi landing, they actually used existing pilings. So you, you, know, you could use the pilings, but uh, maybe have a floating pier where you have water level access instead of standing up top and all it's good for is an observation deck agreed just and a thought no absolutely and this is why when we when we look at design and, and costing measures being able to bring council a variety of menu choices as opposed to being prescriptive right, for perfect. for that exact reason i appreciate that thank in you in fact we did have one of our service groups uh, a couple of years ago actually offer to make that floating pier happen at almost no cost to the city so who knows uh councillor alamani thank you mr mayor I I totally agree with Councillor Paulson. I think that would be a, a fantastic idea. Um, so thank you for bringing that up. Um, my point was uh, just because I can't remember if it's come up in the past or not, um, and whether it was part of the um, uh, the investigation that happened. But you know the the chunk of pier that's sort of separate from the the main pier. Um, was that investigated at all as far as safety or or you know because I, I obviously we can't deck that and we won't be able to do anything with it but can we remove it or is that feasible just wondering about that chunk that's sitting out there yeah it would be something that we'd need to investigate further as far as uh disruption of the the ocean the floor there um yeah thank you um so councillor paulson do you want to move uh, receipt of the report please very good report by the way thank you uh, that the monthly report from the Director of Parks, Recreation and Heritage providing information about current departmental operations be received. Second, Any discussion? All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Uh, Council, that brings us then to bylaws. Uh, City Clerk, uh, June 25th uh, public hearing. Verbal report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, public hearing was held this evening at 6.15 p.m. in Council Chambers with uh, two members of the public in attendance. 
Um, the applicant, Lisa George, applied to amend the text of the zoning bylaw by amending the definition of family. The amendment would permit up to six unrelated non-transient persons to occupy a provincially licensed group home in a single family dwelling. Uh, the Director of Development Services um, provided background information <coughs> and presented his report of June 19th. There was no correspondence uh, regarding the matter. The applicant was in attendance and responded to questions from Council. Um, the Director of Development Services confirmed that if approved by Council, the amendment would apply to all provincially licensed group homes that meet the applicable licensing authority standards. And the uh, hearing terminated at 6.26 p.m. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Sauvey, are you able to uh, make those two yes, motions? Mr. Please? Mayor, that the verbal report from the public hearing held June the 25th, 2018 regarding bylaw number 4965 be received. Second? Second, Second Mr. Mayor. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. And Councillor Sauvey? That the zoning bylaw tax amendment number T14 definition of family George bylaw number 4965 be read a third time. Seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. That the zoning bylaw tax amendment number T14 definition of family George bylaw number 4965 be now finally adopted, signed by the mayor and clerk, sealed with the corporate seal and numbered 4965. Seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, thank you, Council. Uh, and from the uh, Director of Finance, Water and Sewer Rate proposal, uh, the Council, uh, this concerns uh, the increased rates have already been adopted in the 2018 to 2022 five year financial plan. These are the bylaws that are required to implement the rates effective for September 1st billing. Uh, water rate increases. Uh, per the 2018 to 2022 financial plan are as follows. Uh, 2018 is a 10% increase, 2019, 10%, 2020, 5%, 2021, 5%, and 2022, 2%. So there's a 2% increase for this year in sewer fees, connections, and sundry charges. So it's just to bring into uh, compliance what we're already uh, put into budget. Uh, so, Councillor, uh, sorry, um, Councillor Alamani, are you able to move receipt and the rest of the motions, please? Yes, that the report from the Director of Finance dated June 19, 2018 be received. So, seconder? Second that, Mr. Mayor. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Carried. And uh, the remainders, uh, Councillor Alamani? That sewer connection and regulation bylaw amendment number 12, sewer rates and septage, septage dump fee 2018, bylaw number 4967, be now introduced and read a first time. Second that, Mr. Mayor. Any discussion? Councillor McClellan? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I, I will be opposing these um, bylaws. I opposed at the time voting when I was here, voted against the increases last year and these ones that are prepared. I don't think they're necessary, and I think they're too high, but we've got them, but I, I can't with a clear conscience vote for them. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Minions? Thank you. Um, just to um, clarify, because you said you don't think they're necessary, um, I'm just, maybe if you could expand on that, I'm not clear on why they wouldn't be necessary. Well, they were put up, and the, the rationale given as originally, and this is going back a bit of time, not long, was that if we don't put them up, then we won't be able to get more grants from the government to put in our water system. Well, it's the same story we heard about putting in water meters. And you know what? We were the only ones putting in water meters. The rest of the island still gets grants from the government. I, I don't believe that that's an accurate or a good enough reason to just put up our rates. I know we say there, there's more costs, and sure, they probably should go up a bit, but 10% and the amount they're going up in the next few years is really large and those of us who uh, have a garden and and are doing what we're trying to do what everyone says we're supposed to do to be self-sufficient and and uh, sustainable are going to be penalized because we use water to water that garden so to me it's wrong and uh, a small increase yeah but this is too much and I, I cannot support it 
Okay, thank you for clarifying. I actually agree with you that that's not a good enough reason to increase rates at that at ten percent. Um, I'm wondering if the CAO or Director of Development Services could comment on um, the plan for increasing these um, and the long-term viability of our assets, um, inventory renewal and infrastructure renewal, and if that's more why we're increasing. Mr. Mayor, I can tell you that this is a matter of asset management, that um, if we don't contribute these amounts, and, and this is not city staff saying this, we, we took a um, professional's uh, um, report on this a number of years ago, as the director's report says. Um, if we do not make these increases, then the expectation is that our infrastructure will either have to, um, maintaining our infrastructure will have to be subsidized with general revenue at some point in the future, um, or there will be uh, basically taxation increases to pay for those those improvements at that time. So these these um, fee increases um, for, for a period of years, which were almost at the end of uh, these, these larger increases, um, are meant to get us to a sustainable evergreen um, fund for our water and sewer. That's the basis behind it. Which is why at the end of this, we're down to a 2% increase instead That's of correct. the 10% yep. increase, because essentially we have created the reserve fund, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, First one, has, first time has been moved and seconded, unless there's something else anybody wishes to say. On the motion then, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. And Councillor Alamani? That sewer ahead. connection and regulation bylaw no, amendment number 12, sewer rates and septage dump fee 2018, bylaw number 4967, be read a second time. Second that motion. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. That sewer connection and regulation bylaw amendment number 12, sewer rates and septage dump fee 2018, bylaw number 4967, be read a third time. And I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. And that waterworks bylaw amendment number 10, rate changes bylaw number 4968, be now introduced and read a first time. Second that motion. Is there a discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. That Waterworks Bylaw Amendment Number 10, Rate Changes Bylaw Number 4968, be read a second time. Second that motion. Discussion. All those in favor? Carried. Oops, opposed? Carried. And that Waterworks Bylaw Amendment Number 10, Rate Changes Bylaw Number 4968, be read a third time. Uh, discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, Council, how are you feeling? Are you? Uh, would you like a five-minute recess at this point? <laughs> Physically, how are you feeling? Would you like a five-minute recess, or are you ready to carry on? Sorry, <laughs> Councillor Washington. Okay, let's uh, let's take a five-minute recess. Uh, we will come back at uh, just before five tonight. Caller meeting back to order. Okay, Council, we have uh, from the Manager of Bylaw Services uh, a bylaw offense notice enforcement amendment. Um, we have this uh, report here from uh, Mr. Scott. Uh, council, any, <laughs> and he thought he was gonna get away easy. You know, you gotta get to work right away in this place. Uh, Councilor McClemon. You had a question? Yeah. Uh, do you want me to make a motion to receive the report first? Before uh, let's I start make asking? the motion and receive the report first, if you and don't mind. The report mind. from the manager of bylaws services dated January, June 20, 2018, be received. Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. So ask your question. Okay. Um, I've read through your uh, <coughs> updates and tidying up and uh, clerical error corrections and so on. A and I, I don't see a whole lot, I think, that was probably different than what we had before. If I'm wrong, you can tell me what I missed. But I'm just curious, now that you're here and we have a position that we didn't have before and you're it, and as far as I know, uh, I don't always hear when everything happens right away, but as far as I know, we now do we now have two bylaw officers or is that still coming? 
Uh, the posting is closed, so myself and the director um, will go through the hiring process and, and begin screening with interviews this week. Okay, I notice a lot of the um, bylaws we have are, are traffic in motion. Are our bylaw officers going to be like the ones in Enimal and able to issue those fines? Bylaw officers do have the power to enforce all bylaws that are regulatory, so um, it would be a discussion to have with the CAO and, and the Director of Development Services on a strategic plan that the community wants and how to prioritize that uh, with council as well. Well, I, I'm concerned about a couple of them. One of them particularly is the, uh, I think it's a $500 fine for taking a, an overweight vehicle on over a bridge that is restricted in weight, and that happens consistently on the Gertrude Street Bridge. It, some problems with that, and I won't bother discussing that now, but, um, and it would only take a few fines and those trucks would stay on Beaver Creek Road and not come around uh, Compton by the school and, and down over that bridge. But in the NIMO, they, bylaw officers are able to stop vehicles and issue the fines. And it helps pay for the function, pay for your wages and the wages of the uh, bylaw officers. And it's something I've, I've been a proponent of for quite some time, is that we make this uh, a self-funded program. And I'm just wondering, now that you've got it here, now that you're here, are you willing to look at that and uh, make it so that we can do what, what, otherwise, why bother having a bylaw officer if you can't do it? That's, that's my feeling. Sure. Um, like I said before, you know, I am new to the position, so I'd like to understand the needs of the community and what the priorities are for council as well as members of the public, as well as direction from staff. So uh, once I have a better understanding of that and priorities have been set on what the key issues of the community are, I'd be more than willing to discuss all of them. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, Councilor Minions? Thank you. I was just going to comment more generally that it sounds like what Councilor McClemon is um, talking about is a prioritized plan which we've talked about a lot on this council um, picking I mean not you know picking which bylaws we want to enforce and which ones we don't want to enforce but um, you know creating priorities for the community so um, I'm thankful that you're here and looking forward to get started on that and I'm wondering from the CAO if there's any plan um, for starting to have that discussion at this point and I know it's very early uh, I think mr. Scott can respond to that question Myself and the CAO have spoken um, about uh, going w w into a meeting with council, um, I believe the July 9th meeting, um, to further discuss uh, you know, how to prioritize that, that strategic plan. And, and um, in reviewing the status report as well, I noticed that there are some higher priorities and I do plan to focus on those and get those checked off as soon as possible. Okay, uh, Councillor Silvey. I'd be amiss not to throw my comments on this, but I'm really looking forward towards a vision of having a proactive department than only responsive. So that's my two cents worth. Thank you. And in the uh, in the last little while, there was you know I personally have received lots of uh, in, you know in inquiries about various bylaws and so on. And I've responded with, well, we've just hired the, uh, the new manager of bylaws, so let's give him a bit of time to, to get his feet wet and uh, do the work that he needs to do. So uh, we are looking forward to, the, to progress on many of these things related to bylaws. So once again, welcome aboard. We have lots of things that we want you to turn your mind to. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, and Councillor McClemon, uh, could you make the, uh, the other motions related to this, please? With the bylaw offense notice enforcement bylaw 2016 amendment number one bylaw number 4954 be introduced and read a first time second mr mayor all those in favor carried the bylaw offense notice enforcement bylaw 2016 amendment number one bylaw number 4954 now be read a second time second mr mayor all those in favor carried the bylaw offense notice enforcement bylaw 2016 amendment number one bylaw number 4954 now be read a third time second mr mayor all those in favor carried and uh from the director of development services uh housing agreement uh, we have a report uh dated june 20th providing a housing agreement between the city of port alberni 
and the West Coast uh, Native Healthcare Society. Uh, Mr. Smith. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so uh, Rainbow Gardens, uh, West Coast Native Healthcare Society is is looking to move forward quite soon with beginning construction of, of both their extended care facility and their affordable housing uh, units. In order to qualify for the under the DCC reduction bylaw for the affordable housing portion of their project, they are required to enter into a housing agreement and that must be adopted by bylaw by council and signed by both parties. So that's what's uh, in front of you tonight and the housing agreement uh, does meet the requirements under the DCC reduction bylaw that council passed previously. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Councilor Minions, are you able to move receipt and then the other, and the readings, please? That the report dated June 20th, 2018 from the Director of Development Services providing information on a housing agreement for 6123 Russell Place be received. Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Uh, carry on. That housing agreement 6123 Russell Place Rainbow <laughs> Gardens bylaw number 4966 be introduced and read a first time. Seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. Uh, any uh, comments, Council? All those in favor? Carried. That housing agree agreement 6123 Russell Place Rainbow <laughs> Gardens bylaw number 4966 be read a second time. Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. That housing agreement 6123 Russell Place Rainbow Gardens bylaw number 4966 be read a third time. Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? <coughs> Carried. Okay, uh, Council, that brings us then to correspondence for action. Uh, the first one uh, is from the City of New Westminster. We have a letter dated June 7th, uh, 2018, requesting Council support the resolution at the UBCM convention in September. <coughs> urging the provincial government to study the impacts related to the changes made in July to the Strata Property Act. And uh, Councillor Washington, are you able to move that motion? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the letter dated June 7, 2018 from the City of New Westminster requesting Council support the resolution at UBCM convention in September, urging the provincial government to study the impacts related to the changes made in the July 2016 Strata Property Act be received. Is there a seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. Any discussion? Councilor McClemon? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm not personally aware of, of the uh, Strata Properties Act changes or even what was there before. I've never lived in a Strata. Is this causing a problem in our town? Does anybody know? I'm not aware that it's causing a problem, but perhaps the CAO has some background information on that, or perhaps the Director of Development Services has background. Um, I'm, I'm not aware of any problems that they're occurring, but to be fair, I did not read the, the City of New Westminster's letter, so. Uh-oh. Okay, but I'm it, just it curious. Seems, it seems like it's talking about it, how stratas are operating in ex existing strata councils, so yeah. that's not something that's directly related that we get involved, that the city so would get involved in. We're not asking, we're not being asked for support, we're just asked, being asked to receive it, that's all. I think they're asking for support, uh, but then we, the we motion is to, to receive the motion to receive it. That's correct. Yeah. So I have had a few complaints from people in Strata, so I don't think we're involved in them. So I tell them that, and they can uh, yeah. go back to the thing. So, but the motion is just simply to receive their letter. Oh. Okay, Councillor Paulson. I don't know. Maybe Councillor Minions read this differently than I did, but really, I think it has to do with dispersing of the Strata at the very end, like selling it out, whether you tear it down and, and giving protection to yeah. people who don't want to sell or do want to sell. And well, I don't see that we're in that position in, here. In, in, in scanning this quite quickly, uh, what comes to my mind is in the lower mainland, in some very old stratas, mm -hmm. the land, the development potential of the land is now so high that they're looking to liquefy the old strata and sell the land because that value is is quite quite significant and and i know there are there is pressure in parts of the lower mainland where that value of that land is so extraordinarily high and where you can get much more density on it now we we do not have that same uh, uh concern here as far as those super high land right. values so 
On the motion to receive, all those in favor? Carried. And then, uh, Council, we are, have a, a letter from the Valley Street Rods Car Club. Uh, we have an email dated June 7th requesting the use of the parking area at Harbor Key for the Thunder in the Valley Car Show event on Friday, August 10th, and closure to regular traffic uh, to the Harbor Key from 2 until 9 to accommodate the event. Uh, Councilor McClellan, are you able to make that motion, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor, that the email dated June 7, 2018, from the Valley Street Rods Car Club requesting use of Harbor Key for Thunder in the Valley Car Show event on Friday, August 10, 2018, and close you to regular traffic to the Harbor Key from 2 p.m. until 9 p.m. to accommodate the event be received and Council concur the request subject to notification of emergency services, consultation with effective business to minimize potential conflict and traffic concerns and provision of standard liability insurance. I'll second that motion, Mr. Mayor. Um, any questions before we vote on it, Council? CAO, just out of uh, curiosity, uh, what uh, are the Valley Street Rods using to secure the entrance to, uh, to Harbor Key? Mr. Mayor, that's a good question. Um, we'll reach out to them tomorrow and ensure that they're doing that. Um, and I think you're referring to um, large vehicles or blockages. To are we using a dump truck? Are we using yeah. cement blocks? What I, are we using? I know other organizations are working with Industrial Heritage Society to bring uh, heritage vehicles down, but we'll check with them tomorrow and make okay. them aware of that, of that requirement. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Alamani. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's not related to the motion, but only because I haven't really heard from them yet. Uh, do we know the status of the th actual thunder in the valley this year? Uh, we actually passed a motion to support that uh, earlier this this year. Did we? So they're moving remember. forward and they've got their <laughs> dates. Okay, good. On the motion then, all those in favor? Carried. Um, Sunray Village uh, Paradigm Foundation, we have a letter dated June 7th uh, requesting Council adopt a micro-housing land subdivision. And I'm wondering, uh, Councillor Paulson, are you able to uh, move receipt of that? Um, I don't quite understand the whole report, but uh, I will make the motion that the letter dated June 7, 2018 from Sunray Village Paradigm Foundation requesting Council adopt a micro-housing land subdivision be received. Okay, is there a seconder to receive their <coughs> letter? Mr. Mayor. Okay, uh, um, clarification council, Councillor Minions. Thanks, I just wanted to comment that we have been waiting on a report about um, secondary suites and carriage homes. Um, and I think the greater issue here is the housing crisis um, that we're currently facing. And I think this is a group that's looking to address it um, with micro housing that may or may not be a fit for the community. But I think overall, we need to do a thorough review of um, the strategies that we're using to create housing in the Valley, micro housing being a part of that. I think since we um, made the motion to get the um, report on secondary suites um, and some minor changes made there, the housing crisis has really gotten away from us. Um, and the intent of that is really no longer enough to um, address what we were looking to address with it. So um, I'll maybe bring forward a, a motion to the next meeting that we look at a more um, robust strategy on that rather than just um, secondary suites. That would make sense. So let's uh, let's move receipt of this now and then decide on further direction. So you're suggesting you can provide further direction at the next meeting, which would be great. So on the motion to receive this, uh, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. And then, uh, Councilor Minions, we can leave the second part until you come forward with yeah. something more robust. Okay. Uh, Council from the Uptown Merchants Association, we have a letter dated June 12th requesting Council undertake an engineering design for the traffic circle at the intersection of 3rd Avenue and Angus. And uh, did we not address this as part of the, uh, part of the presentation? Uh, C City Clerk? No. No, we didn't vote on it. We just uh, had some discussion about it. Uh, so, uh, again, uh, the from the Uptown Merchants, uh, Councillor Sobe, are you able to move receipt of that, uh, that letter? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, that the letter dated June 12, 2018, requesting Council undertake a engineering design for a traffic circle at the intersection of 3rd Avenue and Angus Street be received. Is there a seconder for that? Second. Uh, discussion, Council, uh, Councillor Minions? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
I think there's a request here for engineering, obviously. Um, I'm not sure that a traffic circle is um, exactly the right way to go, but I think that um, the clear thing is we would probably like to improve that area um, and adding an item to the budget next year um, for a streetscape planning process um, or reviewing the current visions that we have because we do have the 2007 study for that included the uptown area um, is probably worthwhile again to leave it to the next council to decide but have it as an item to be on their agenda. Uh, Councilor McClellan? Yeah it says council direction requires so after we receive it we can make a motion. If we choose to go there. Mm -hmm. If we want to, okay. Uh, so on receipt of the letter, all those in favor? Okay, now, uh, council wish to entertain anything else? Councilor McClellan? Yeah, I, I would make a motion that, that uh, we, we ask for the staff to come back with a proposal to improve the Third Avenue area, and that can include Roundabout Boulevard, or first of all, taking off the truck, so. The motion is to have council to have staff to come back with a design for improving this Third Avenue and Angus area. Sometime before budget time, is that your? That would to? be a good plan. Okay, uh, it won't happen. Uh, Councillor Sobey, are you seconding that motion? No, just for discussion. Okay, let's get that motion seconded before we begin the discussion. Is there somebody wish to second I'll that? I'll second it. Okay, go ahead, Councillor Sobey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> I'm having a hard time with this because any improvement for beautification of the uptown I'm in full support but when we're talking about the taxpayers money as into what's a priority for the community I, I just I shake my head as into there's much more engineering work that should be done around our community and dealing with aging infrastructure as for the concept of the um, roundabout and this uh, uh, traffic uh, roundabout and uh, traffic circle and so forth. Uh, under the Motor Vehicle Act, the purpose of having such a roundabout, and this is what the motion is speaking of, is to promote continuous flow of traffic, uh, unlike intersection with traffic lights and, and signals and all that. It, it's not the most, with my traffic experience as a law enforcement, it's not the most um, benefit thing for, for pedestrians, uh, actually, depending where you put the pedestrian uh, walk, it's actually uh, not the greatest idea. Uh, the studies and the cost between, uh, depending on what you're talking about, a traffic circle or roundabout is effectively a, a startup point of a single lane one of a startup point of about $250,000. It just, to me, it just, there's that type of money to even get staff and staff time to look into this is uh, to me a waste of taxpayers money I would just rather that we concentrate uh, we're putting the cart before the horse here and find out an alternate route for the trucks to uh, as for me my understanding this roundabout is to prevent from trucks from going there but let's get the solution as into where we could get the trucks going first before we start wasting staff time and taxpayers money on on a report engineering report Okay, uh, Councillor Paulson. I, I just want to make some just general comments, and uh, I kind of look at that intersection, and I, I don't even know if a traffic circle could fit in that intersection and properly designed, so I would need that answer from an engineering, engineering point of view. Um, my old hometown of Edmonton actually had probably 100 traffic circles and I go back to visit Edmonton now, and they're all gone. And I, I don't know the rationale, but just there's a major city that's eliminated all of the traffic circles. And this, the second comment I have to make, and um, I travel down to Qualicum on a regular basis, and they installed a traffic circle at the top end of Qualicum before you go down Memorial, and it is the worst designed piece of piece of highway that that I drive, and actually it's caused. A number of problems since it's been built in as much as um, it's an older population down there and I don't think they know how to drive the circle uh, whether whether it be signaling or getting in and out of the circle there's been a number of accidents where they've actually driven through the middle of it and now I see a lot of the locals when nobody's quite looking they just kind of drive over it like they just try and straighten it out 
It's the worst design. It, it, it is in no way in anybody's turning circumference for any car that I know of. And I just hate it. I mean, we got a place in Qualcomm. I love the place, but it was a huge error in my mind to build that down in Qualcomm. It, it just has to make sense. So that's just a comment. Councillor Paulson, you and I are getting getting a bit older, so we, we might be in that position. Well, the just be careful how you. Uh, you yeah. Um, uh, Council, the other thing that I wanted to uh, bring forth is, uh, um, you know, we've made a commitment at this point to uh, to Johnson Road, and uh, we haven't done much on Johnson Road, and anything that has happened, frankly, on Johnson Road has a little bit has been some flowers, but mostly it's it's been as a result of. Uh, of our uh, relationship with the, with the Department of Highways. They're the ones who have spent most of the money on Johnson Road in the last uh, little bit. Um, so we can't uh, just ignore that unless we're gonna change our strategic plan. So uh, that's, that's there as well. So it's, uh, uh, Councillor uh, Sove, thank you for talking about the, the need to make a decision on what should happen with those trucks before we uh, do too much with it. Uh, Councillor Alamani, I saw your hand up. I think Councillor Manions was before me, no? It's okay, I saw your hand and we can, okay. she, we, honest, I won't forget her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so the, the point I wanted to make was just that, A, we're, we're not engineers, so I don't think we should be talking about specifics, whether it's traffic circle or, or, or whatever. Um, uh, although, you know, what we do need to get to is an ev evidence-based decision, right? Um, there's lots of examples of other communities, including on the island, that have lots of, of roundabouts. They've done them successfully. Um, but I think that's, like Councillor Sove said, putting the cart before the horse. Um, we have a great example of the Johnson Road Charette, um, where we had a really good public process. Um, no, we haven't gotten funding for it. It hasn't gone forward yet, but that public process is there, and... and um, informed us uh, and it's not something that we uh, should or I don't think will just drop um, so I think we should take that example uh, use it for the uptown area um, there's all sorts of considerations for that corridor um, there's traffic there's pedestrians there's how to how to make it beautiful how to um, put it into the active transportation plan. There's lots of different kinds of considerations to, to come into it. So I don't, think, I don't think we can just say, yes, let's put a traffic circle on Angus and Third or whatever. Um, we need something a little more fulsome than that. We should include the community so that they can um, be a part of that process. And it's something that the community will own and be um, excited about uh, and see a vision behind. Um, and I think that's what the uptown merchants um, are kind of getting at. They have a vision for, for their uptown. I think we should bring that vision to the community and allow the community to uh, uh, run with that. Okay, uh, last word to Councillor uh, Minions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I like the intent of Councillor McClemmon's motion. Um, I was going to comment that it, I don't think this is something we can just leave to staff to bring back a plan for the up, for uptown streetscapes. Um, I think this is something that requires a public public process. Doesn't necessarily need to be, you know, a forty thousand dollar report, um, but a public planning process um, that you know, even if that's maybe led by uptown merchants. Um, that they can use examples of other communities and come back with a plan. Um, I think when we don't have a fulsome community plan, we end up doing a little bit of flowers on Johnson Road, then you know, lanterns on on Third Avenue, then a boardwalk at Tai Landing, and we accomplish very little because we don't really have a strategic plan for where we're going. So, um, and you've commented as well that you know Johnson Road was our strategic plan. So. I think we're veering too far away from planning. Um, mm. And but I, I think I will vote in support of Councillor McClemmon's motion because I do think that um, this is something we need to continue conversation on. I'm just not sure that the process is correct. Okay, um, City Clerk, did we have a motion, second motion? Could you please read it back, please? We've had so much chat that it's easy to banish. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the motion is um, to direct staff to provide a report. Um, uh, to, to bring back a report with a proposal and design options for improvements to Third Avenue. Okay. Um, all those in favor of the motion? Opposed? <coughs> Carried.
Uh, Council, this uh, brings us to uh, the Albany Valley Pride Society. We have a letter received from the Society requesting City Hall fly the rainbow flag at City Hall prior to the Pride 2018, the weekend of uh, July 27th, 29th, and also requesting that the rainbow crosswalk be repainted or touched up before July 27th. And I did? I'm sorry. I saw the Uptown Merchants Association. I thought it was just stutter there in the, uh, in the agenda. Uh, my apologies. Um, we have the email dated uh, June 5th requesting permission for this to close the city streets from Argyle to 2nd and 4th and 3rd Avenue from Argyle to Mar Street on July 12th. And uh, Councillor Washington, are you able to make that motion, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the request to close city streets from Argyle to 2nd and 4th and 3rd Avenue from Argyle to Mar Street on July 12, 2018 from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. for a block party be received and Council concur with the request subject to notification of emergency services, consultation with other affected businesses to minimize the potential conflict and traffic concerns and provision of standard liability insurance. I'll second that motion, Mr. Mayor. Any discussion? Uh, thank you for doing this. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you, Uptown Merchants, for doing this uh, and being willing to put out the, the work, the effort. This is great. This is the kind of thing that our uh, city needs. Uh, okay, Council, that brings us then to the Albany Valley Pride Society. We have a letter uh, requesting those things. So, Councillor Alamani, are you able to make that motion, please? That the letter from the Albany Valley Pride Society requesting City Hall fly the rainbow flag at City Hall prior to Pride 2018 weekend, July 27th to 29th, and also requesting that the rainbow crosswalk be repainted, touched up before July 27th be received, and Council concur with the requests. Seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. Any discussion? Uh, Councillor Paulson? I just noticed in the letter that came that um, there's still some money left in the GoFundMe fund and there's still some paint left over, so there really shouldn't be any, any incurred cost in this. And um, for years in the future, um, we always need to look at things like this, and um, I want to make sure that we're not incurring costs over and above what our regular crosswalk maintenance is, but uh, I think this year is great. It's good to go. Covered off. Well, uh, any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? Carried. Um, and uh, Council from the Albany Valley Heritage Commission, McLean's Mill Society, we have a letter dated June 20th from the Albany Valley Heritage Commission regarding demolition of the first aid shack and plans to preserve the historic resources on the McLean's Mill Society. Uh, and count, do we have someone here that's able to answer any questions? Please come forward. And I notice that we have some members of the McLean's Mill Society board here too, in case we have further questions. If I may, Mr. Mayor, before uh, any of the audience uh, has the opportunity to, to speak, a couple of items I just wanted to bring uh, to your attention. Uh, first of all, that uh, I believe the situation could have been entirely avoided had heritage staff uh, endeavored to meet with McLean Mill Society staff before uh, in advance of any of the work being done on the site um, to confirm the inventory of the assets and the buildings. Um, so I think that was a miss from staff. Uh, secondly, uh, it's frustrating to see that after the work that we had done with the, the commission and council to confirm uh, the council's desire for a Heritage Commission, as well as updating the Heritage Commission bylaw that the commission elected to approach the media prior to reaching out to a fellow member of the Heritage Commission. So it's frustrating to see that as we've made that, that progress within council chambers that we're not following through with our, our own bylaws. So what I'd, what I'd like to, to see happen is, I think a bit of a confirmation of the direction of council, uh, uh, where council would like to see the McLean Mill Society move forward. And then from a, a staffing standpoint, endeavor to connect those, those groups once again, so that we can, we can avoid this situation in the future, potentially look at that, uh, uh, review those assets for future consideration so we don't get into this bit of the war of words uh, in media and we can handle it uh, in-house. 
I, you know, I really thank you for that because, uh, as you know, I spent a lot of time uh, and effort working with our First Nations government partners, and one of the big questions that I get asked is, uh, well, if we come on board with, you know, the, the heritage part and we're contributing and uh, part of some of those decisions, how secure is our involvement? And uh, will we be exposing ourselves to, uh, you know, a lot of criticism that we weren't expecting? So it's, you know, it can be a little bit uh, sensitive sometimes with this, and we want the partnership. We don't want the, the other part, which is the conflict. So, um, Councillor McClemon, are you able to uh, make this motion? Sure, Mr. Mayor, and we can debate it after. The, the letters dated June 20, 2018, the Alberni Valley Heritage Commission and, and McLean Mill Society regarding demolition of the first day shack of the McLean Mill be received and that the Council of the City of Port Alberni reaffirm the support from the McLean Mill Society. Thank you. Is there a seconder? I'll second that. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, question, Councillor Sobey. Uh, just a question. Do we not have, I'm sorry if I could address the question to yourself. Do we not have bylaws or procedures between both committees how to better communicate and external communication outside their societies without going through their board first? Uh, this is why we have terms of reference on commissions. Um, I think it's as simple as that. And I know, it just it hasn't been followed and I just don't understand how we need to reiterate the importance of following the term of reference. Yeah. Um, thank you for your, uh, your candor, Director. I uh, really appreciate that and it's uh, good to remember that. Thank you. Uh, Council, uh, the next item we have is from Dave Hoard of uh, Classic Car Adventures. We have a, an email dated June 20th uh, requesting that we close Elizabeth Street uh, from Johnson Road to Burke on uh, July 29th for a Cars and Coffee event. And Councillor Paulson, are you able to uh, make that motion? Sure. That the email dated June 20th, 2018, requesting to close Elizabeth Street from Alberni Highway to Burke Road on Jul Sunday, July 29th, 2018, for the purpose of hosting cars and coffee be received and council concur with the request subject to notification of emergency services, consultation with all affected businesses and residents to minimize potential conflict and traffic concerns and provision of standard liability insurance. Is there a seconder? I'll second the motion. Sec then. Uh, any discussion, council? All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. And uh, proclamations, we have none. Uh, however, we do have some informational correspondence. Uh, City Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Only two items, an email from Vancouver Island Regional Library attaching its latest edition of From the Board Table and from the Alberni Valley Museum and Heritage Commission minutes of their May 2nd meeting. Thank you. Uh, Council, anybody wish to pull anything out from either of those two items? Sorry. Uh, You'd have to run for you to be able to ask that question. <laughs> and then not only that, but other people have to agree that you should be sitting here. Uh, okay. Um, a motion to uh, Councillor Sobey, do you want to move receipt and file of those? Uh, I'll move receipt of uh, informational correspondence item through one field two be received and filed. Is there a seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. Um, City Clerk, do we have a report from in camera? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, um, just a report from tonight's um, in camera meeting. Um, Council received and filed a letter from the Alberni Low Energy Housing Society um, withdrawing their request to be considered for city owned land at this time. Thank you very much. Uh, so, Council, that then brings us to Council reports. Uh, the first one is the Mayor's report. So, I'll give you a uh, a brief overview of what I, some of what I did in the, between the last uh, council meeting and today. Uh, June the 11th, I attended a, a community uh, working group and that is uh, an intergovernmental group uh, led by the Sashat First Nation uh, where representatives from the Valley governments get together to discuss areas of mutual concern. Uh, this is the second uh, such meeting and we're hoping it'll be a, a regular one where we have an opportunity to, uh, to have a, an open discussion about uh, 
um, things that are important for, for all of the governments in the Valley. Uh, June the 12th, uh, attended an, an Aerosmith uh, Rotary lunch. Uh, they were, it was at the uh, Starbuck Grill. Uh, they were hosting visitors from Kerala and uh, South India. Um, interesting group, uh, people who, many of them involved uh, from business and were keen to find out more about business opportunities in Port Alberni, but really they came uh, as part of uh, an exchange. Um, on uh, the, June the 14th, uh, we had a regional housing uh, discussion uh, that was led uh, through the regional district. Uh, it was a great opportunity for a couple hours, uh, and there will be a report coming back from that uh, in due time. Uh, June the 16th, as many of us here, I attended Port Days, uh, a great event, weather cooperated. Uh, it wasn't not too hot, not too cold, just, just, just right. about right. Um, and uh, also later on that day attended the grand opening at the uh, Maritime Museum of the Long Lost Ladies, uh, the Tatouche and the Swan, the Tatouche being a tugboat that has, was resurrected from the city works yard, uh, was hidden by trees and shrubs and brush and all the rest of that stuff. And, uh, and the Swan, which uh, uh, Al Greenhall had sunk on the bottom of Sprout Lake in front of his place on Faber Road there. I uh, got tired of uh, looking after it, so he just sunk it. Uh, but uh, at any rate, it's there and now for everybody to enjoy. That's an Al Greenhall kind of move, if anybody knows Al. Um, That's the only thing you can do. <laughs> no, he was a great cyclist, too. Uh, the, uh, on the 18th, uh, I was in uh, Surrey with the Port Authority and visited the uh, Teal Jones plant there. And one thing I'll share with Council is Teal Jones is a pretty large operator on the coast. They have more than 1,500 employees. Uh, one of the, they've by far the largest uh, uh, wood manufacturing left on the Fraser River. And they do not export any raw logs. And from this, that one site, they produce 8,300 different products, that one site. It is amazing the, the extent, the breadth of what they produce. It is, uh, yeah, it's stunning what they do and it's an incredibly uh, automated plant and uh, yeah. there's things that are done in that plant that are, have come straight out of aerospace and they're not done in any other mill in Canada. Um, the 19th, we had the watershed stakeholders meeting. Uh, the two major things we were looking at were the, uh, the uh, forestry logging plans in the area and uh, preserving water quality. Um, we also discussed preparations for the upcoming fire season. Um, and the 19th, uh, we had uh, Walk With Your Dock at the Multiplex, uh, very much the, uh, the trade show, uh, great information and a good opportunity to speak with the people there uh, about how to become healthy and how to assist our entire uh, community in, in improving overall health. Uh, the 21st uh, attended the National Aboriginal Day at the Friendship Centre, a uh, great session uh, as well. Briefly was able to put in some time at the, the Forestry Lands and Natural Resources. Uh, uh, sorry, that was the next day. I uh, met with a, a, a Assistant Deputy Minister of uh, Flynn Row to discuss the upcoming fiber report. Um, and then uh, that night spoke at the uh, VAST, or the 8th, 8th Avenue Learning Center graduation ceremony at ADSS. Always uh, tremendous uh, seeing those, those students, and of course, uh, some of them take a little bit of extra time, so I even knew uh, some of them. But there was uh, a couple that graduated, and it was, it was incredible. Uh, he, was, he was 64 and she was 63, or he was 63 and she was 62, but there they were graduating from grade 12, and they were so proud that they had done this, but so were their grandchildren. It was just this amazing thing. I was, I was just, yeah, it was just amazing. And then on the 23rd council, I, uh, I was, as were the rest of us, I attended the, uh, the rye wedding uh, and reception, and then had the, the pleasure and honor of speaking at the reception. Uh, so the wedding was held at the, uh, at the, uh, the Gurdjawara and Fifth Avenue, and guaranteed not everybody could fit in because there was just too many. Uh, and the reception of over 650 people in the multiplex. Uh, it was amazing, absolutely amazing. 
the largest wedding I've ever attended. Uh, in my own wedding, we had seven people. So to go into one <laughs> with 650 was uh, quite different. That's usually called eloping. <laughs> That's called, you, you phone your parents two days before, That's by the way, we're, on, we're in Whitehorse and don't bother coming up. Um, and and the, uh, yeah, it cost $200. And, was, and that was all, Bonnie paid for all of that. It's great. Um, the, I also, later that evening, I attended the Southport Residence uh, sort of gathering at Trin Trinity Church, and uh, it, it was good. There was a lot of uh, great questions, um, uh, some wanting to track down uh, rumors about things and others concerned about traffic and lights and darkness in the middle of winter and so on. And then on the 24th, I uh, did a few things. I uh, spent a couple hours at McLean's Mill as in doing some cleanup in preparation for the upcoming uh, uh, event in, in August, uh, the Shaker event, the, and uh, then attended the Clulet First Nation barbecue at uh, Canal Beach at their request. It was a tremendous event and a great honor to be invited and be able to speak on behalf of the city. And then, uh, showed up at the Blair Park uh, color run, but uh, by the time I got there, it was raining pretty hard and they'd canceled the, <coughs> the dunk, dunk tank. Um, and thank you to Councillor Allen. Manny, you probably got dunked and Councillor uh, uh, Councillor Sobe, you got dunked, so then I didn't have to, so I really appreciate that. <laughs> but I did get Take wet feet one. crossing the grass, which were, was pretty wet by that point. Took one for the team. So you took one for the team, you too. Thank you so much. Okay, and council, uh, that's my report. I move acceptance of my report. Second, Mr. Mayor. All in favor? Carried, thank you. And from the regional district, uh, Councillor McClemon. Yes, Mr. Mayor, there's been two meetings, I guess, since uh, we were last here. There was a regular meeting and an Alberni Valley Committee meeting. And uh, in both of them, the BC Transit uh, contract was discussed in the Alberni Valley meeting we had uh, representatives there from the Fur Park Echo, from Sashat, uh, and several other organizations in town that use, and clients that use the uh, Handy Dart. And it was well discussed, and they're talking about expanding that and looking at it for next year, seeing what can happen, and BC Transit are gonna come back with another report. There was also a discussion on Biosolids, which has something to do with uh, liquid waste management and doing something with it for Tofino and, and to house it. And I'll let you guys figure out what they want to do with it, but I guess they're making a fertilizer of some sort. And um, the uh, other thing we did at the uh, regional district was a, signed a contract or voted to sign a contract with the Bulldogs in a partnership, and we're going to ask the Bulldogs to do some advertising for us and what they usually do is uh, when they go into the schools they'll take, take a, a subject and tell you know the school students are, are quite impressed with this and, and the biggest problem with it that I find is the kids come home and start telling me I should be doing something and uh, so it's effective even if it's a pain but uh, nonetheless I think it's a good idea and, and they're coming. And, you know, it started out with my grandson telling me to do my seatbelt up all the time and things like that. Anyway, uh, that was pretty much what happened at the uh, regional district that involved us and that we're involved with, so I move that report. Um, seconder? I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. All in favor? Councillor McClemon, do you listen? <laughs> yes, I try to, but sometimes I forget. Yeah, okay. He's now recycling his juice box. <laughs> okay, uh, that brings us to Councillor's reports. Uh, let's start with Councillor Washington. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, June 14th, uh, West Island Wilderness Advisory Group meeting. Um, WFP was in attendance to let us know that their stand block level retention, they met their target, and their downed woody debris, they met their target. And it's very interesting if you have the time to sit there and, and, and listen to it. It's, it's, it, it keeps, keeps, keeps our force going, yeah. No, it's, it was a great report. Um, 21st of June attended Salmon Festival meeting. Um, sorry to say that our proposal for an open beer wine spirits concept uh, won't be happening this year. Uh, just too many details in too short a time period. Um, things like attendance, which we've never had, a, they've never had a gate, so there's no telling. 
but if you have an open concept, you have to have a $30 an hour security guard for every 100 people you have on the ground. So we got to take some numbers, do some crunching, and hopefully maybe next year we can uh, have that open concept where you can come in and have your have your beer, go sit with your grandson and watch the entertainment without having to be behind the cage. Um, past weekend, 23rd, 24th, uh, working at the Business Development Center with my lovely bride hanging in Jip Rock and uh, trying to find studs, the ones in the walls. Um, and then uh, just to mention that uh, July 10th, this year, we'll be selling 33 years of our town. Our first event is at Blair Park, the Wild Wild West, July 10th at Blair Park, 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, kicking off the summer, we got another four events uh, to wind up right up, coming right up to our own salmon festival. And lastly, just like to wish everybody out there a happy Canada Day. That's my report. Thank you. And Councillor Alleman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, First one I'll do is the Air Quality Council, which was on a Tuesday, so I wasn't actually able to attend it, but I do want to point out uh, just from the minutes, um, there has not been a whole lot of uh, activity on the wood stove exchange program, which is unusual. Um, so if people are looking to exchange their wood stoves for, uh, for anything else, uh, those vouchers are still available. Uh, contact the ACRD. Uh, the final day for those before uh, before summer is June 30th, so you have to get them on, get them in this week. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. Um, the other major topic was um, was the VIU project for uh, uh, looking at uh, various air quality issues in the valley. So uh, so we'll get to see that in a little while. Um, as for other things. Um, on the regular day of the AQ AQC uh, was the housing roundtable, which the mayor has already uh, mentioned. Um, there was the uh, softball tournament on uh, Saturday, which I was at. Uh, my son took part, and it's always a lot of fun. Um, and then on Sunday, uh, the dunk tank, um, which uh, Councillor Sove was there, I think in the better weather than, than me. Um, there were a lot more people there. And then, uh, and then when, I, uh, when I got there, it was, it was pretty quiet, but still lots of... Uh, opportunity to be in the water so it was all good um, lots of money raised uh, so that's that uh, and then the last one was I, I got to participate at least a little bit in the uh, uh, discussions that's going to happen around the aquatic center uh, this week um, I won't be able to attend those meetings so uh, I was on the phone with the consultant and he sounds like a very capable capable person uh, and it sounds like it's gonna be a great uh, great discussion a great way forward on that project so looking forward to see what happens with that Okay, thank you. Councilor Minions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a couple things to highlight. Um, Reconciliation Committee, we are um, working on planning an event to celebrate First Nations um, culture and heritage this summer. That will be open to the public. Um, we have not 100% secured a date yet or detail, so I will report on that at a later date. Um, and then the other, only other thing I wanted to highlight um, is not directly city related, but um, often our reports are not. Um, ACOS AGM, um, I chaired the ACOS AGM last week um, and I stepped down as um, chair of ACOS. Um, I've been happy to be a part of that organization the last year and a half um, and I'm looking forward to seeing who the next leader is. Um, but I felt there were situations where it conflicted with my role on council. So um, I'm looking forward to representing what I've learned on ACOS um, more as a city councillor. So, and that's my report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, councillor Paulson. Uh, on June 13th, uh, with the mayor, uh, attended Sushat uh, Council meeting on behalf of the uh, Canada Parade and, um, and festivities group with an invitation to participate. And um, I think, uh, I'm not mistaken, they've actually taken our invitation to heart yep. and we'll both be in the parade, but also at the Harbour Key uh, amongst the festivities there. On the 15th, I um, uh, went to Nanaimo um, and we attended the grand opening of the Nanaimo First Nations Passive House Project. And it could be the only one in Canada and it could, it possibly is the only one in North America like it. And actually Passive House um, offers 85% reduction in, uh, in costs, uh, whether it be hydro or, um, you know, just energy costs. Um, on the 16th, uh, was at Port Days and uh, had a display with the Bulldogs and manned that display and we handed out 250 Slurpees that day and uh, we were pretty popular. On the 19th, uh, attended the North Island College graduation ceremonies and uh, like Vast, 
I, I, I was pleasantly surprised, but uh, really enjoyed seeing the vast range of ages that are, are, are going to the college and um, either upgrading or, or going into careers. And it, it's great, great to see. Uh, on the 19th, I also went to the Alberta Clackwood Continuing Care Society, and we had an audit review meeting there in preparation for the um, for their AGM, which I think is tomorrow. Um, on the 20th of June, um, uh, I went to a meeting in the morning with the cruise ship organizational committee meeting, and it's one of those things I think I said before, you kind of step out and you come back and you're elected and the protocol director for that. What was interesting there about that meeting, just very briefly, is um, there is a tour operator that's been engaged out of um, Nanaimo that operates the tours and helps organize them for Nanaimo and Victoria. And um, the discussion was around the multitude of tours that, that we can offer as a community. And when those cruise ships come here, they want to see who we are, how we work and how we play. So, I mean, Cathedral Grove was a natural, uh, the arts and culture, um, McLean Mill was a natural and they're ready with a plan there. Um, the uh, community forest, I think that would be a great place. And that, the community forest shows you how you work but also how you play because there's trails and stuff. And on the 21st, I actually attended the community forest meeting and um, Councilor, with Councilor McClemon and he may want to expound on that. And just a quick comment on the rye wedding. I snuck into the multiplex uh, on the Saturday afternoon because I wanted to see what it looked like. And it was like a wonderland in there. They had totally, it was not a skating rink anymore. They had totally transformed it with lights and video screens and the table settings and everything were spectacular. It's neat to see our multiplex actually be a multiplex. And that's my report. Thank you. Councillor Sobe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I also attended the uh, Port Days at Tai Landing and got to visit our fellow Councillor Paulson there. Um, a great event. I was really impressed, especially with the local talent, with the youth, with the music and all that. It really highlighted Port Alberni and spoke to many tourists and who truly appreciate and were not even aware of the Port Days and took advantage of uh, the whole matter. On the same day, I attended the uh, Soltist Festival at the Rolling Arts Centre. Just amazing local artists uh, that are there and uh, selling their products and uh, pretty much having sessions into how to do art and, uh, and so forth. Um, very interesting because a lot of them have shown a lot of interest about uh, working with the Port Authority when the uh, cruise ships are coming in and all that, so they, they could uh, display more of the local arts. Uh, on the same day also, I attended the Athletic Hall where more of our local artists were there and display and had demonstrations, so I truly appreciated uh, the time I got to spend and to speak with them. On the 18th at the uh, Multiplex, I attended the Steps for Wellness Community Health Fair uh, well attended, well organized, and uh, congrats to the uh, Parks and Rec for for doing such a, a great event. A lot of good information, a lot of nonprofit societies there, including mental health and a crisis line and so forth. Um, also at the Alberni Elementary, the Twinning Society uh, showcased their opportunities for local youth to experience a couple of weeks of school in Abashiri in Japan and uh, it was well attended and uh, really looking forward to uh, seeing our youth uh, taking advantage of this opportunity to uh, share some culture. Um, on June 21st the Advisory Planning Commission discussed the temporary uh, permits uh, relating to zoning at 5405 Argyle. Recommendations will be as followed to Council. And on the same day, also attended the Friendship Center and uh, celebrating the Indigenous Days, uh, which was a great, awesome barbecue and uh, a lot of cultural exchange with the dance and the singing and drumming. So it's always appreciated. On the 22nd, uh, I attended the fundraiser. I didn't stay too long. Uh, I was, had a busy schedule, but the fundraiser for uh, curtains for theater, uh, Raise the Reds, at the Blue Marlins, so they're trying to raise funds uh, approximately $15,000 to get those curtains replaced. So if there's anybody out there that's able to help, please 
get a hold of the uh, staff at the Capitol Theater. On uh, June 23rd, attend the uh, Alberni Valley Gurdwara Society Temple with uh, the mayor and our uh, economic developer, Pat Deacon, uh, had the opportunity to attend a wedding there. So uh, congratulations to the special couple. And uh, it was a beautiful ceremony. And uh, also on the 24th, <coughs> Uh, yes, I was in a dunk tank, and uh, compared to other that attended, I was very busy in the dunk tank. Uh, I was there, first one in attendance, in great weather, and uh, and uh, a lot of other occupants, uh, not an, only uh, Chris Almy, but uh, there's Dallas Ward, Chris Turner, a lot of community got involved, so I, I, I truly appreciate it. And it's for a good cause, uh, the five... Uh, 5k color run is uh for helping our local dance which uh, group was that the elite dance elite dance academy so uh hopefully we raised a lot of funds i know i almost drowned so i'm sure there was a lot of money that went into there i lost count how many times i got dunked but all for a good cause and uh, the children it was absolutely great uh, unfortunately, the organizers were giving them free ball to dunk me, so I could have made more money. Uh, June 25th, uh, attended the Alberni uh, Valley uh, Senior Citizens uh, AGM Home Society uh, for their AGM. Society operates to provide low-cost re rental housing to uh, seniors in the Alberni Valley. Uh, I offered my services to assist in any way uh, related to city issues and and through the uh, Senior Advisory Committee. So we're gonna be uh, working with them and uh, looking forward to it. And that is, I'll stop so, so we could go home. So that's my report. Thank Th you. Thank you, and uh, mm -hmm. Councilor McClellan? No comment. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, just one thing I guess I should add to the um, report from the Regional District. I just opened an email here from Regional District was sent a couple hours ago that they've hired uh, uh, Kelly Gilday, who I believe was our fire chief a couple of days ago to be a protection services. And I'm not sure what protective services are gonna be doing, something to do with emergency and all that kind of stuff. So I guess we lost somebody to them and so we'll have to hire another fire chief. Um, just in my own report, Mr. Mayor, I attended the uh, watershed meeting and uh, I will be following up on that, talking to uh, the representative from Island Timber, Ken Epp, uh, after going over the map that he showed us and wanting to do some logging in the, uh, in the Bainbridge Lake area. Also uh, went to the community forest meeting with uh, Councillor Polson and the community forest is, it was a very well run meeting and uh, the community forest is doing very well and they are gonna have an AGM soon and one of the proposals that will be coming uh, to the AGM, uh, we'll be looking at a, a way of uh, contributing more to the community directly. As you know, we voted for to have them to ask the uh, board to try and purchase cut or land or whatever is necessary so we can increase the community forest so that it is sustainable and the plans that they have are that over 50 years you can log an area and uh, you got the same amount of wood there after 50 years has gone by. So that, that's, I think, a pretty good definition of sustainability. I do appreciate the work they're doing. They do it pretty much in the background and we don't hear much about them. And haven't heard a whole lot since we had our last output from the uh, Legacy Fund, but uh, I think we made the right decision in asking them to do this and it, it looks promising at least. And I also, uh, uh, attended a Bulldogs meeting, which I found quite interesting. I, I actually, uh, not sure who I represent there because I represent the uh, City Council on the ACRD. I represent the ACRD on the, on the Chamber of Commerce and represent the Chamber of Commerce on the Bulldogs. So somehow or another, I got around there. And uh, it is an interesting uh, time. There looks like we may have a, a winning team this year. I'm relying on Councillor Polson to make sure that happens. And... Uh, and a good schedule. We do have a bit better schedule, and I think that that is going to be good. So, uh, and the only other thing, uh, Mr. Mayor, as I came out of my house on Sunday, I heard your name mentioned on a loudspeaker, and and Councillor Almond's name mentioned on a loudspeaker, and I thought, gee, I'm sorry, I'm not there. 
And uh, as it went walking around the dike, there was a bunch of people throwing chalk around, and you guys were somehow involved. So, <laughs> grow up, eh? <laughs> Anyhow, uh, that's the end of my report, and I make a motion we adopt all these one-off reports. Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carries. Uh, Council, I just want to uh, share something with you that I uh, received today. Uh, it says, hello, Mayor Rattan. Just a scribble to say a big thank you to your people of Alberni and surrounding uh, waterfall scenic areas slash parks. Uh, so kind and helpful. We stopped uh, to take a photo near the place where there's a teepee next in a car with a, a lady and little girl pulled in to see if we were okay. Um, that's okay, we, I'm sure that's uh, on the other side of the hump, but that's okay, we'll claim, we'll claim that area anyway. Yeah. Uh, how kind is that? So, well done, Mayor Rattan, you've got a wonderful country here from Monica and Petra, Dublin, Ireland. And when they said just a little scribble, I'll pass it to council so they can see that I was definitely a little scribble. It's, uh, thank goodness I had 38 years trying to uh, read kids' work in school or else I'd never been able to read that. Um, council, that brings us to a new business, just one item from me, and I'm, it's a notice of motion that council adopt a social media code of conduct that applies to our elected official, uh, officials in the future as well as persons appointed to represent the city. And that's just a notice of motion. Any other new business, council? Thank you. In which case, it uh, brings us to question period. It's an opportunity for public and press to ask questions of the mayor and council. Anybody wish to ask the council? Okay, I... We might need a motion to go past uh, There's three, yes, and the, if you can make it 10 seconds or less each, we can do it. Other else, we need a motion to extend a council meeting. I'll make the motion to extend okay. the council meeting, just to be sure. Second? Mr. Second, Mr. Mayor. All in favor? Council, Ellen, come ahead with your question. Hi, back, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. Um, so it's not a question so much as um, it's. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to Council for um, agreeing to considering the um, works on Third Avenue and improvements in some way, shape, or form. Um, I think we feel like the lost kid sometimes because lots of time is devoted to Johnson Road, and I understand that strategy for sure. But um, there's huge revitalization taking place and and we will bring people to the street and to that part of Southport so thanks for that consideration that's really important for me to hear personally um, and and I, I have to say I feel really compelled to speak after um, Keith Ambrose's passionate um, comments about busloads of people coming to Port Alberni so um, in the business of a cause um, we have a drop-in center and uh, pretty much the word on the street comes through the door pretty well every day in terms of what's happening. And I can tell you, there are no stories about busloads of people coming into Port Alberni. Um, what I would suggest is that your bylaw people are doing the right things. Yeah, and you have derelict properties and properties that people can't stay and live in anymore, and, and property owners are being held to task on that, and the result is that people are actually being uh, put out on the street. So homelessness is an absolutely enormous issue um, that we all need to be paying attention to. Um, with reference drugs, um, there are many, many people that are drugs... Um, um, I'm going to not use the word drugs. I'm going to say they're active in addi addictions in substance use of some way, shape, or form. The older generations are going to recognize this as alcoholism. It was there when you were young and when you're growing up, and it still exists along with the drugs and other items. So please don't just say it's drugs. It's substance uses that we have to be paying attention to in the terminology and how we look at this and the issues, social issues around it. Um, personally, <coughs> because of some of the Chase, uh, the changes and some of the um, the, uh, the people on the street with you, De Dennis, Denis Sauvé, Mr. Sauvé, merci. Um, that uh, you know, there's a greater uh, a greater um, 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 presence. Thank you very much of people on the street, and and I think that to, to some degree that there's a decrease. Um, I used to see drug deals pretty well every day out my back window, um, in the back alley, and in behind, and um, you know my staff would see them on the street in the front. So yes, there is a drug problem here. We have to acknowledge it. We have to address it. But um, again, I, I think that our bylaw people are taking steps and making differences. Housing is critical. If we, if we address basic needs of the people, 
in this city. We house them in clean, decent, affordable homes. We're gonna we're gonna be step one of of addressing the basic needs of people. So you know. Go for it at that UCBM uh, convention. Uh, speak with the minister about housing. Um, many, many positive um, dollars um, have been um, allocated now. Uh, you know, probably once in 20 years is what we're hearing about the funding that's available for in support of housing, affordable housing. And so while we're all as agencies taking advantage of it, um, we need to look for long-term sustainability in funding uh, for programs. And so as you go to the conference and you speak with ministers, those are the kinds of messages that I would I would suggest you carry forward. So sorry, it was more than 10 seconds, but that's my, <laughs> my five cents worth. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you got more than five cents worth, but uh, counselor, I mean, sorry, not counselor yet, not anymore. Uh, Chris, please come forward. Okay, so then you don't need more. You don't need five seconds. Uh, I just wanted to thank council as well. Um, the uptown merchants are not set on a traffic circle. I need you to know that. But now that we've come forward, you're moving things forward, and that's what we know needs to be happening. Um, my apologies to city staff because they turned it over to you once again <laughs> and uh, the uptown merchants will do anything we can to assist <clears throat> um, also thank you for allowing us the road closure we just wanted people to know that on July the 12th it is not a sale for the merchants in the uptown area it is a party for the community there will be free music uh, f free yoga Anything we can do to showcase our community, um, the, the music will be, will be put on by local artists. Um, so it's just a, an opportunity to come up, have some fun, revisit your uptown area, and uh, thank you very much. Good for you. We, uh, we need a lot more of that stuff, so thank you so much. And Mr. Della Vincenza, are you uh, coming as an interested party, uh, not as a resident of the city, or? He wasn't in the city. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, yeah, I've got some good news. Okay. Two bits of good news. Number one, for years, the youth center has been having a hell of a mud hole. As soon as the rains start in November until about mid-July when they stop for a few weeks. Anyhow, um, city, a city crew went in there last year, uh, pardon me, a year and a bit ago. And this past year, we had absolutely no mud, no water, no drainage runoff, no problems in the basement full of water. So I'd really like to thank the group that was involved in that. I know I promised Davina a letter, but tonight, just before I left to come here, I was checking my emails. The one I sent to her bounced. I'm dyslexic. Everybody knows that. I put the wrong something in the, the web address is wrong. So she didn't get it. I will forward it to you tomorrow. Uh, and the other good news is we have decided we've had enough of Port Alberni and my wife and I are moving away, but I want to tell everybody something. In my whole life, I've never lived anywhere in one place as I lived here. It's just that there's, my, my, when I was a little kid, my mom used to say to me all the time, you need a camel and a tent. I'm, I'm very nomadic. I've lived all over Canada, all over the United States. I'm on my way again. So I just want to thank you. It's been fun. I know, Mr. Mayor, you and I have disagreed on times, and we've agreed at times. Thank you for the entertaining 15 years. Well, thank you for the time you put into the uh, community. Okay, Council, uh, that then brings us to adjourn. Somebody like to make that motion? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second? All in favor? Carried. Thank you very much. <laughs>